thoroughly working with the cable cutter today. Yeah, I can, I'm fine blaming Big Red. Yeah, yeah, it is all. It's all Red's fault. Next Kickstarter will be for. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stretch goal, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is yeah, funny. This is this is the best five minutes of streaming so might, far. Yeah, might need to hire seven sides of gaming next time. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you. Wait, do we get sound? Sound is back, the but no back? picture. No picture. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The interdiction is over. <laughs> Five hundred first is appearing. Okay, we appear to be having sound back. Yep, that is fantastic. Oh, so and, we uh, will and... start back at the beginning. First of all, we would love to say thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That was amazingly funny five minutes. It was. Uh, we were just saying, you guys did that, I think, way better than we might have pulled off. So that was right. super funny. Actually, we're done. We can't beat that. Oh, that's so, cool. yeah. <laughs> we're done. It's time to start. <laughs> uh, no, so jumping back into it. Once again, my name is Randall Bills. I'm the creative director at Catalyst Game Labs. Uh, I've been playing Battletech for oh, 38 years and working professionally on Battletech in just about every capacity for 28 years. And beside me is Michael Stackpole. Uh, I've written a whole bunch of the novels, been, uh, uh, you know, just been involved with the property for almost as long as, well, I think we're both in, in different angles. In been different involved angles, in, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah we've been amount. playing and involved about the same time, yep, but yep. Mike got to work on it about a decade before I did, which is fine because we were, we were just talking about, we we're trying to remember the first time we had met. And that's that's actually what this is all about. Right. Um, right. Is we decided to just kind of go back to the beginning because it's the 40th anniversary. And we are having a a resurgence that literally the entire industry is talking about. Absolutely. Uh, there's, there's almost nothing that's really, I think, can compare to how low we had been in the dark days when me and a few lonely souls were up on the parapets by ourselves in the cold dark rain right um right. and now the show has been stunning there is so many games going on right over the wall that you guys can't see uh they just came up to us to say that they had put the 500th person through the grinder today wow um and so we thought we'd go back to the beginning sure and uh, so we were trying to uh, remember where we had first met right uh, I I think we both agree it was an '88. Right. I was right after uh, the. I guess, was it the second novel was out? Because weren't they literally the, the first two came out in '88, and 88. and the and the second one, Repost, came out during Gen Con. So literally, the wedding sequence, the 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 wedding stuff, day by day Happened coincided at Gen Con. with Gen Con. That yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I was yeah. I was not there. I didn't make it to Gen Con until '84. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember seeing the photos and mm -hmm. the cosplay, the cakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was all gorgeous. I still have, uh, I managed to get a hold of one of the wedding invitations. Uh, yep, invitations yep, yep, that yep. I still have, you know, tucked in a baggie somewhere. Yep. Um, but yeah, we ran into a comic book shop in downtown Tempe, Arizona. Right. Um, and then right next to that, con I, I remember getting a signature. I can't remember if it was the first or second warrior book. It, it probably I, would be the second one because it, it would have been, yeah. One. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure it was the yeah, second one. Yeah. And then right after that, we also would constantly run into a, each other at uh, the Game Depot. Right. Uh, Dave and Patty, they aren't there now, but they right. were a staple of the game Absolutely. scene for decades. Every yep, time, yep. I mean, I lived there practically <laughs> all through high school. Yeah. Um, after I went off to FASA, every chance I had that I came mm -hmm. back in town, I would go by, say hi. Yeah. Uh, they were just magnificent. We love yeah. them. Yeah, they're great people. Yeah. Uh, when your Blood of Kerensky trilogy came out, uh, I remember you're sitting out in front for the first one. Yep, yep. Uh, in a chair on the lawn. <laughs> And I'm immediately like standing right there. Come here, Mike. Actually, the really funny one is his first Star Wars novel. That I think was at the one bookstore. That could yeah, 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 it yeah. It was kind yeah, of yeah. around the corner. Yeah. And I went in, and I still have that book, Rogue Squadron. And he literally wrote in it, "It's okay. The next BattleTech book won't be too far away. <laughs> Read this one." And I was dying laughing. Yeah, I still have yeah, that yeah. Uh, on my shelf somewhere. Yep. Um, 
So, yeah, so we've been doing this just for an incredibly long time. You still, yeah. I believe you still have Lauren outbeat for novels, right? By I like think so, one? yeah. Yeah, I think by one. Yeah. yeah. So I had, to, I had to pick up the pace now. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. actually, two if we count Calhoun the Senate as a novel. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I think we, yep. Well, yep. I think you should, just because oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Be in front of Lauren, and everyone yeah. likes yeah, to be yeah, in front yeah. of Lauren. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Star Wars, what's that? Yeah, well, there you go, yeah. It's a little thing. Some people have heard of it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> um, so many games. How many games, Randall? Uh, oh, there is. Wow, the table length is about twenty or thirty feet long. There's, I think, seven or eight of oh, those yeah, yeah. in a row. Every one of them packed. Yep. Um, uh, hundreds of players. Uh, there's only about six to seven thousand people here at adepticon right so if you run that number just in the grinder alone we have put somewhere between five and six percent of the entire show oh yeah just yeah. through the grinder and that's not talking that the, there's a huge paint and take station of yep. i think like 10 seats that's been filled the entire show yeah uh, it's really just been magnificent yeah absolutely I, fantastic the energy just seeing people come through seeing families come through it's just been just been absolutely fantastic you know seeing lots of old friends seeing uh, people who are brand new who are you know able to run in and, and try stuff in the grinder or you know as you were saying the paint and take was very popular yeah and i i literally got to paint a figure the other day you know yeah 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 and uh uh you know so that was uh that was very cool and and just like i say the enthusiasm here has just been wild uh know. you know everybody is i mean we were we were noting uh, today before we all sat down that it's not as crowded today I mean, but it's the last day of the show so yeah. that's not any surprise but the people who are here you know you just they're just glowing uh which is like uh, absolutely fantastic yeah. yeah so uh trying to keep in that theme of going all the way back to the beginning uh because people love that sort of thing right uh, as do i myself um, I thought I'd start kind of a little bit with where I kind of ran into Battletech for the first time and how that played out. Sure. Uh, and then we'll kind of flip over to Mike. And if you guys have any questions uh, as we're doing it, please post it up there. Um, so my first introduction into kind of science fiction in a whole and robots kind of as a whole was uh, G-Force. Mm -hmm. uh, was... Um, uh, uh, Yamato, uh, Spaceship Yamato. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like fourth or fifth grade and my brother somehow talked to my mother into allowing me to get up an hour early right. to watch those with him. Um, and then when I was around 11 or 12, uh, discovered Voltron. Mm -hmm. Okay. I uh, love that to death. And then like so many of us from the 80s, around the 80. 6, 85, 86, uh, the Robotech hit sure, the airwaves sure. in the U.S. Um, and I had never seen anything like it, right? It was utterly groundbreaking, and, like, they made you cry when mm -hmm. Poker died. Like, what? You you can kill characters right. in a cartoon? Um, and the, the mature themes in it and mm -hmm. the action, the aliens, it just utterly blew me away. So then I'm at a local game store. And I see, and by the way, when I mean, when I say local game store, you know, back in our day, to sound nice and old, they weren't game stores like you think of now. Right. It was a small game section in a model trains, oh, yeah. RC yeah, yeah. plane. It was all a hobby that, thing. It was games a were hobby not, thing. Yeah. And then if you were lucky, they'd have a little spot that would have sure. what would be tabletop gaming, role-playing games, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And the very first one I saw was the Fox's Teeth cover. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't quite tell if it was Robotech because it's got that mech, which, by the way, to this day, I don't think anyone knows what that mech is. I think it <laughs> might be a Shadowhawk because it's just utterly destroyed, right? Great piece. And I'm like, huh, that's, that's really interesting. I flicked through it a little bit. Sure. And then like a month later, so this was uh, October. No, this was November 1986. Right. I then walk in, and there's the second edition box set. Yeah. And now yeah. I know that this must be Robotech because it's got an Excalibur on the front. Right, right. And there's the officer's battle pod on the back. It's got the SDF symbol on the leg. Right. I was confused as to why it was called Battletech. But then also I'm like 16 at the time. 
and you know, twenty bucks for a sixteen year old at that time was a little stiff. Oh, fortune, yeah. So it actually took me a whole month to convince myself to end up buying it. I remember Chad and Tony, my friends, we all drove down there. I finally right. bought it in that December. Yep, we sat yep. down and played it. We like sprinted through the rules. So of course we did everything wrong. <laughs> and then I jumped in a battle master. Chad was in a Warhammer. And we just ran up to each other and stood there and then just rolled dice to blow them up. Tony's in the Marauder way off at maximum 20 hexes so he can just plink at us with that AC5. Right. And then we were doing heat wrong, which is you applied all the effects first and then took the heat away. It was all terrible and horrible. Right. And I was just lost. I was hooked from the get-go. Sure, sure. And then, like, the next year in 86, I walk in. And there's decision at Thunder Rift. Yep. And I'm like, what? Yep. There, you can you can write novels that allow you to like because this was right before like Dragonlance had come oh, yeah, out yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. never seen a gaming novel before. And then I picked it up, and man, I read those books so many times. And then yeah. that that's when I'm you know saw the advertisement for you know Mike's gonna be there, and I'm like, oh, a you know novelist, and then went there and totally lost it, geeked out horribly. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of my my introduction now we can talk a little bit later about how i then joined fast and got the chance right, to work right. on it but so what was your how did you kind of brush up against it for the first time so so for me i was already in the industry i was working for flying buffalo and had done a lot of their solo adventures and everything so i was already in the industry and you know in that 86 time frame 85 86 time frame dragon lance is coming out it, it it's necessary to have or in the industry, the feeling was it was necessary to have novels. And I noticed at uh, Origins uh, 87 that uh, uh, FASA had done a novel, Decision of Thunder Rift. Uh, I had also written a novel, a fantasy novel that became... Uh, it's Italian a, Revenant. Italian right? Revenant, yeah. right. Great novel. And uh, so I walked up to the FASA booth, because uh, I was a freelancer, uh, you know, as well as... We were from Flying Buffalo, but Rick would always, the owner, Rick Loomis, uh, uh, would always let his staffers freelance if they wanted to on their own time. And so uh, I remember walking up to the FASA booth, and I spoke to Jordan, and I said, uh, hey, I see you're doing novels. I've written a novel. And Jordan, quite rightly, looked at me like, oh, God, not, not another game designer <laughs> who thinks he can write he novels. He can write novels. Yeah, because yep. he was like, oh, <laughs> you know, it's just a disaster. Um, but uh, he said, well, you know, we, uh, we've we got a new game coming up called Renegade Legion. You know, maybe we could use you for that. He said, that's great. I'll send you some material. I'll send you samples out of our first six chapters of Italian Revenant. Uh, and uh, he said, we'll send you some stuff. So... Uh, July 14, 87, box of stuff arrives from, uh, from FASA, uh, and I just devoured the stuff over the weekend, uh, which was, I think, the, the House Steiner book. That would have been the was, first one. Right, yep. so I, they sent me a copy of the House Steiner book, nice. and then the manuscript of the Draconis Combine source book. Oh, nice, nice. And, uh, uh, and so I read all those things, and, you know, as freelancers do. Uh, that Monday, uh, Ross Babcock called me up and said, uh, Hey, got your, uh, got your samples. Uh, I read the first six chapters of that novel. Love to read the rest of it. Uh, and I said, great. I have to send that to you, by the way, read all the stuff you sent me. And, uh, you know, uh, I can't wait to see Renegade Legion, but if you ever need anything for Battletech, let me know. Classic freelancer line. Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Whatever, whatever, you got anything? Can, are yeah. there any scraps or scraps <laughs> going to fall on the table? Scraps on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, beg. yeah and, and Ross, without missing a beat, said, uh, that's what we want to talk to you about. We want you to do a trilogy. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, and he says, yep, 100,000 words, uh, you know, three books, 100,000 words each. You got nine months. And that is that is one of those that is one of those decision points uh, in your yep. life. And uh, you know, in my head, I was thinking, if I say no, I get nothing. If I say yes, at least I have a shot. Uh, and so I said, sure, piece of cake, not a problem. Because uh, <laughs> you know, that's what you have to do. 
and, and then, uh, uh, you and, hung up the phone and started hyperventilating a little. Pretty, pretty much. That's kind of <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yes, yeah. And uh, and you know we met at uh, we met at Gen Con just to kind of hash some details out and stuff like that and sign that contract. I think the first contract with those three novels was a whole five thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Man, I did have, uh, did have royalties on the back well, end, sure, and, and, but it's, and those contracts were really generous. That but, was yeah. 80s gaming. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. That was that was it. But. Uh, uh, and and there it was, you know. And that, it was that's just, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was the foot in the door. That's awesome. So we've gotten a couple of questions here. Uh, I was uh, Mike and Randall. You both wrote novels and played the game. Like Lauren, do all authors play to a degree, or is it just a coincidence? I think most novelists play to a degree. Yeah. Um, not there's very few people that have played as much as I have. For example. That's very true. <laughs> um. And, you know, for example, I uh, I went back and verified with my best friends after the fact years later just to say, was am I crazy? Um, but we basically figured out, like, my junior year of high school, I'm pretty sure we played, like, 300 days of battle time. Wow. Because we would just have games set up oh, in our sure, houses, sure. in our rooms, right? Yeah, yep. And we would constantly be going over to each other's houses. The moment we'd walk in, we're like, let's get in a turn or two, right? Sure. Um, but I think, I think there is... You, you don't want to let the board game dictate your writing. Right, right. But you want your writing to be informed by the board game. Yeah, it and has I, to have that feel. It has to have the feel. And I think a fan, somebody reading it can tell yeah. when somebody really doesn't play the game. And so I think most of our authors, if not all of them, at least have dabbled enough Yeah. yeah. that they then can go, yeah, okay, I've got that flavor. I, I can bring that in. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's been a ton of people sharing how long they've been playing. So about 10 years ago or so, when, uh, like I said, we're, you know, on the lone parapet in the dark, cold rain, uh, when there just wasn't a lot of us. First of all, for those that stuck with us through all of that, we cannot thank you enough. Right. That just, you helped to make this happen. Um, but the thing. For a while there, it was kind of like it's just old us old farts getting older <laughs> and what's going to happen. And now I've sat there shaking hands with these little six and seven and eight-year-old kids that are sitting over there in the hall playing their first oh, yeah, beginner yeah. box set game or their first grinder. Uh, I, wow, I'm, get, I'm getting a little emotional because often like I, I try and think it's not me. It's right. it's us. It's yeah. the shared experience. You know, I had, yeah. a, I had a father and son that came up and the and the father said like me and my son were able to connect again yep, yep. through BattleTech and thank you and it's it's those those are the experiences that are just so amazing to me and and so now it's every age every bracket yep. we've got guys that have been playing since 1984 and they grabbed that battle droids box uh or some that have literally learned here at the show yeah and are excited and are just grabbing force packs uh it's just it's great to be at a place where we can hit the entire spread of all the experiences and all the ages. I think one of the other things which has just been really impressing me, and it's one of those things that, that goes to the heart, um, so many people come up and, and in essence say, this game, this world, this fiction, these things. You know, when I was in high school, it was not a good time. And this was my sanctuary. Oh, yes. And, and you know, the fact that we have been fortunate enough to contribute to something we love that has made, you know, the world a more welcome place for them yeah. and allowed them to connect with other people. I mean, I had somebody yesterday come by and thank me for writing the fiction. And his wife was, you know, there and she said, you know, he and his friends got together in high school. And, you know, it's you know, here it is 37 years later. You know, and they're and they're and they're you know they're still they're still yeah, doing yeah. this, and it's like wow. I mean, that's you know that built connections that that literally are lasting a lifetime. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So, so then uh, the other funny story talking about Jordan. Yes. Uh, since Jordan's not here, and I can blab about him like I always do, uh, he tells the story of he was in a toy fair. I think it was in Los Angeles mm -hmm. in eighty. 82 right, or 83, right, right. one of the two. And Robotech was not a thing yet, but it was coming. But all the Super Dimensional Fortress Macross, there's actually a series of animes 
that are all were kind of merged together um, by Harmony Gold to become Robotech right. in the States. But they had some toys there. And Jordan took one look at those, you know, six, eight-inch tall toys and right. was like, this is going to be huge. Um, and he licensed it from them. I think it was from a company called 21st Century Imports. Well, that was that was a guy in the United States who had seen all of those models being discontinued in Japan. And he imported him. Imported him. Yeah, and Got he it. was he, in the early in the early industry. He was a he was a guy running around doing all sorts of all sorts of deals, you know, and and uh, and so he was able to set up for that license. For, yeah, uh, for so Jordan, we, you know. so he got the license, but Jordan immediately thought, you know what, I don't I don't want teenagers saving the universe story. Right. That's more of a kind of an Eastern style of of mm -hmm. storytelling. Um, not that that can't find a home here, but we're much, very much a Western sure. uh, culture. Uh, and so really is like, we're just going to do follow the Roman Empire, which is all Battletech has almost ever been. Right, right. <laughs> is follow the Roman Empire. Though, um, though they never let me know that. Oh, really? No, no. No one ever mentioned follow the Roman Empire, right? So, so. That is hilarious. Oh, so, well, they're saying that because, and, 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 and follow the Roman Empire is really, really good because obviously that, that contributed to that. Entropic universe, yeah, yeah, why yeah. you had to do salvage yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, and look, hearkening back to the Golden Age and the Star League. And, right, yeah. but at, at the time that they said to me, look, we want you to do this trilogy, we all realized, I certainly realized, that if the universe is going to expand, entropy has to be reversed. Yeah. So so that's why, you know, uh, in, in the Great Death Legion stuff, they find a but memory, the, the find memory core, core. Yeah. Right, and, and there were other things out there so that, that, you know, for me it was like, okay, so Rome was falling for a couple of years, and now we have the Renaissance. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and so, and so that's, you, you know, that's, that, yeah, that's yeah. Where, where, where we went. That's so, funny. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so then we um, let, jump forward a couple of years. Uh, right. 1988 was when Crescent Hawk's Inception came out, right, I believe. Right, right, right. And one of the things that now I, I am not the expert on this in any way, shape or form. Uh, it would be great actually to have Jordan here. Right. Um, but the, they then started working on uh, virtual world entertainment, basically the biotech right. center pods. And really this goes all the way back to uh, when Jordan and Ross Babcock, the two creators of the game right. were in the merchant Marines. Right. And they are basically seeing the Navy's multi-billion dollar right. naval, um, uh, like, computer simulator, training, bridge computer simulator, yeah. simulator, bridge simulator, and he's like, oh, well, we should do that for cool stuff, right? right? And so then he gets some investors together, and they, uh, you know, he tells the story of how he literally, like, you know, was pulling across, pulling apart an, an original Apple IIe, right. if not a one, whatever that was. Pulling it apart and, of course, blowing it up because they didn't know what they were doing. Right, and, right. Um, but they eventually then created the Battletech centers that were found all over the world. In fact, right here. So they, so for those that didn't, were unable to make it, or if you happen to be seeing it and are not too far away, the Battletech center pods are here. They're literally right here. Right. There's a line of people to play. Uh, I was just talking to Nick last night. They've put nearly 1,500 people right. uh, through the pods this weekend, which is like nearly 20% of this entire game show. Right. Um, but he wanted to share uh, Nick Smith. This is one of the early, I think he said it was like 96. Yeah, 96. 96. It's one of the video cards, like $5,000 for this thing. Uh, that, of course, now, of course, this tiny little phone makes this right, look like right. it's a rock. Uh, but it's actually pretty awesome to see uh, what they were doing and just pushing boundaries like crazy. And what's really cool is, like, I don't think what they did in the Battletech centers get nearly enough credit oh, yeah, yeah. for building nearly the, the, the foundation of nearly all of current online gaming. And the fact yep. that the guys that did that, it, nearly every one of them went on to lead some of the absolute titans in – uh, on the yeah. computer game side. Yep. Um, and so I, I just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out there uh, that Nick Smith and his whole team, all the guys that keep these amazing experiences alive and keep this history alive, right. that 
without this type of thing, you wouldn't remotely get the modern computer game landscape. Well, and I, back in the summer of 88 was when we had the first of the planning meetings. Sorry, just real quick. Sorry. Since Nick is uh, peeking in at me, fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand dollars for yeah. this thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you. Right, so, no, yeah. In in '88, uh, we were having the first of the planning meetings. As we we a, a year and a half ago, we had another the latest of the planning meetings. And as per you, what we always did in the planning meetings was we would uh, plan out about five years of content, and then every three years we'd have a new one for the five year thing. But as we were as we were doing the planning of the first one, which resulted in uh, the invasion of the clans and the twenty year update, uh, we were all we were working, and then we broke one afternoon. All hopped into cars, and and I knew they had been working on something like this, and that's why we had the Omnimax, and, and hence why we had to have the clans come in. But they took us to where they were developing the prototypes, and so you're in this meeting where you're just talking about. You know what's going to be going on in the books, and you're looking at photocopies and stuff like that. Then you're sitting in a cockpit, and these were the original cockpits. You got two joysticks, pedals, everything that you're having to do, and it was, you know, it was transformative in terms of holy cats. Okay, now you know this is we didn't have to deal with heat in those cockpits. Oh well, only sort of because yeah. a lot, lot of computer hardware, yeah. but uh, but it was it was so much fun, and so in in uh, Lethal Heritage, in the Blood of Kerensky series, the way the cockpits work is the way that the simulators worked at that time. That's you awesome. know, so I was just describing yeah. that same that uh, that same experience. Yeah, uh, that was a lot of fun. And, and again, that's what I, you know, we, me and my son uh, Bryn, who's the Leviathan's line developer, we at um, the start of COVID, we're like, well, what are we going to do now? <laughs> Because yeah. uh, like everyone, we the company slowed down. We were totally unsure what was going to happen. Ultimately, the company had to speed up. Right. Um, but we decided to, be, to become tabletop miniature experts. So anyone who's followed me on social media for the last few years uh, has seen me that I'm nearing like 100 tabletop miniature games that I've played. Right. Um, and we'll then, and of course, I love spreadsheets. And so I then build these Titanic spreadsheets of like the the type of game mechanics they are, how many minis, right. the type of minis, terrain, all these things, because I love this hobby. It's my job. I really want to understand what's going on. And there are so many times when we have to go, well, okay, it does all this, except for battle time. Right. Or things do it this way for most games, uh, except for battle time. And that's like always been the case. And uh, Jordan will say, that he always thought of of BattleTech as a role playing game first, right, and then a tabletop miniature game, and so it's had such a heavy dollop of role playing mixed in with it. Yeah, uh, and then you bring in the fact that it's had the computer games, it's had the novels, it's had the pods, which no one else has had, right, right, right. and so you just have all these factors, and then you know you get into the the cartoon in the early nineties, mm -hmm. uh, the Tyco toys. Like <laughs> I remember the Tyco toys came out. I'm, ooh, how how old was I? 20, 23, 24 at the time. And me and my friends grab them and immediately turn the hexes into real scale size. Sure, With sure. giant, you know, 25 foot long measuring tapes and went out in the park and we're playing Battletech real skies. Right, right, right. And there's right. a couple of like 10 year old kids that are like just sitting on the edge staring at us. And like a couple more kept showing up right. and they're all staring at us. And then uh, we finally like, you know, come on over. What's going on? They come over and they're like, because of course to a 10 year old, even a 24 year old looks old. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what are you guys doing? We're like, we're playing a game. You want to play? And they're like, adults can play with toys. You know, <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, adults can play with toys, right? Yep. You have um, to get old. You don't you have to grow up. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody mentioned the CCG. That was uh, after I right. started working right. at Fast Up. Uh, but yeah, the CCG came around was a massive hit, mm -hmm. uh, and so we, you know, absolutely we we we've had some pretty big downs for BattleTech, but we have had some spectacular ups. Yep. Um, and it's just amazing to be where we're at. Um, let's see. Let me do, take some quick looks. You guys have just been sharing your own stories. Thank you for sharing them. Those are just amazing. 
Uh, play games wearing silly hats except for Battletech. Rolls are rolls. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Um, just making sure. If we didn't get to some of your questions, you might have posted up there as Mike and I are just sharing these stories. Right. Please repost them up there. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's get to when I actually started working right. at FASA. Uh, so I continued stalking Mike. As all people should. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah. Not, not so on that right. This, so this is the internet. After all, that's true. That's yeah, true. it only happened. So it, was, uh, yeah. it was eighty nine. Is when I went to my first convention. Uh, I went to a uh, game store. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was that comic book shop, or it might have been Game Depot. One of the two. I can't quite right. remember. And there was an advertisement for Leprechaun. Oh yeah. Local game convention in March. I, I, it might still be going. Yeah, it's always. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a local science fiction convention. By the way, this type of thing here was not even dreamed of at this no. age. This was a couple of hundred people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Top uh, out 500. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, all science fiction fantasy oriented with a tiny little room for gaming. Yep. But I'd never even heard of a convention before. So, of course, I immediately had to go. Uh, Chad and I went, uh, my friend Tony, you know, 40 years later still complains that we did not pick him up, even <laughs> though we banged on your door for like five minutes and you wouldn't wake up. Come on, Tony. So, yeah, come on, Tony. <laughs> so then we went there and I walked in and again, compared to these shows, it was this tiny little thing, but I walked in and I was like, I'm home. Yep. Right. Yep. This, this is my people, but Mike was there. So then I'm goobing even more, but he had an unreleased copy of the Wolf Strigoon source book under his arm. And we were literally plotting, how do we steal that without feeling bad about it? <laughs> and ultimately we couldn't because we couldn't figure out how to f not feel bad about it. Right. Um, so then fast forward a few years, I uh, went on a mission, came home. It's 93 and we are starting to run, me and my local gaming group, BC Legion, Chad and Tony and Steve and Manu and Denby and Flake and on and on and on. We started running local Battletech chapters. Um, and so, like 84, we were at Hexagon, mm -hmm. which was a Mesa show. Right, right. Uh, Another and, gaming convention. Yeah, and, yep. and we started running all the Battletech, which means I was connecting up to uh, Stacy Rikerman, mm -hmm. who was the community director at the time. And they, uh, we, uh, we're start like I I you know send in a letter. It's a right. thing you write down on a piece of paper. Pa oh, paper. <laughs> you, paper you, is you, this. From yeah, you uh, yeah, youngins yeah. out there, uh, send it in, and then they would send me prize support, little right. certificates, that type of thing. And so then by uh, and then I started working for America West Airlines. Right. So in '94, I was that. So that was like '93, '94. I was able to go to Gen Con for the first time. Mm -hmm. Now again. I had been reading about Gen Con in Dragon Magazine for years. Yeah. Like, this was the place to go. And so I was able to, like, just hand out a whole spread of tickets. Uh, back when working for airlines was amazing. And right. they would just hand you tickets to give to friends. Oh, so, sure, like, my sure. entire game group came out. Uh, Mike was on that plane every time because it literally <laughs> felt like it was half the valley. Yeah. Oh, it, it was. was yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, like, yeah, half the yeah, plane yeah. was oh, either yeah. industry people or fans, yep, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, and flew out there and had a, you know, unbelievable time. Once again, I think the show in 84 had just, sorry, 94, had just broken 20,000. Yeah. So again, the current Gen Con this year, I, they think is going to break 80,000, but I still have seared into my bones that feeling of how massive it oh, was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And how just like, oh my gosh, every Every well, corner it, it, a treasure it, trove, every corner a dragon. At at, at twenty thousand, it is comprehensibly immense. Yes. you can get your brain around that. At eighty thousand, it no, is, it's, it it's, just it's beyond. It's no, just, no, Gen you, Con you, is. Yeah, I, yeah. I love Gen Con. It is a beast. Yeah, it is hard to get to. It is hard to get through. Uh, but it is also the bread and circuses. Speaking of you know yep, the world yep. empire, it's the bread and circuses of our industry. Yeah. So then the next year. Now we continue the stocking. So the next year, Brian Neistel, once again, I'm going to pause for a sec. 
Without Brian Neistel, I would not be here and have my entire career. A giant shout out to you, Brian. Thank you so much. He was a line developer at the time. Yep. And he was brought out as a guest in 95. And I went out there, totally lost it, goobing all over him. He had the technical readout 3057 mm -hmm. unreleased under his arm. Once again, we were plotting. How do we get it out from under his arm? Which we didn't because he was awesome. Uh, I had actually just for those that follow my social media, uh, I just moved. Mm -hmm. And right before that, I found my 3039 variant of the Succession Wars game that I had made. Wow. Every chit hand colored and drawn on. I've still <laughs> kept it. Okay. I jokingly told uh, Brian, excuse me, hey, we're going to play my new game this Saturday all night long. Do you want to be there? And he said yes. Right? And he, like a trooper, we started at midnight. We didn't right. end until the sun came up. Now, the game's terrible. Right? It has so many problems. But he played it. Okay? So then we go to fly out to Gen Con again. We had our BC t-shirts on. And we decide that we want to go to the hollowed halls of FASA and visit them. So we all drive down. There's like six or seven of us. And, of course, they're like, you want to just come and come to the FASA? I'm like, well, right. yes. So they were all very nice. And, of course, you have this image in your head, particularly when you're younger, three-piece suits. Right, right, right. The giant the tower The corporate, glass. yeah, 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 yeah. And I walk up, and they're, like, dressed in shorts. Scuzzy's walking around without shoes on. <laughs> like... I just like a little shell shocked. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. totally freaking out. All the gorgeous artwork on the walls, the people banging away on yep, the games yep. that I love. But it um, had a very industrial loft feel oh, to it. In, oh yeah, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. in South Chicago, uh, just outside of Chinatown, across from a old uh uh plant, right? Uh, and electricity plant, which in Shadowrun they nuke. That's exactly the spot. And so, yeah, it was a rundown building. Oh, like, yeah. It was, yeah. It yeah was I remember, I remember that same shot. First time I was there, yeah, it was like, like really? This is it? This is funny. You guys are at? But then it was very bohemian and bohemian oh, it, and creative. And oh, and it, it, it was just it was cool. It was so yeah. wonderful. But then I had probably the geekiest, drooliest moment, which is saying something considering what we've already been saying. So Brian Neistel had in his cubicle. Right a unpublished map of clan space hand drawn right and we see it and i kid you not we then did distract him by talking <laughs> in the other part of the room with him so our friend troy could literally on his hand be drawing the clan space home world wow that's how much <laughs> that's how geeky we were so we leave Right after that, FASA starts trying to have discussions of Battletech is continuing to go well. Earth Dawn is really going up. Shadowrun. Right. Uh, this is only like two or three years after Shadowrun 2nd Edition. They needed an, a, an assistant developer to come in. And they're asking around locally. And everyone's like, no. And then they're like, well, what about, what about that guy from Arizona? And everyone else is like, you mean the drooling fan that like ran around screaming like, <laughs> right? And Brian's like, okay, that was, that wasn't the best, <laughs> but but I've been in a local convention with him. I sat down. He designed a game. Right. I, I think he might be the guy. Let's let's give him a chance. And uh, he so he managed to talk him into it. Right. And so then I flew out for an interview. Uh, actually, uh, I didn't even have internet at the time. I right. had to go over to a friend's house, Scott, thank you, Scott, to be able to get the emails <laughs> and exchange some emails with Jill. I mean, right. I love Lauren, but Jill is still the best boss I've ever had. There you go. Jill Lucas, giant shout out. Yep. And so I exchanged those emails, flew out for an interview, took the test, a lore test, and they gave me the job, right? right. But similar to that moment, right? So Mike shared how much he got paid. I'll go ahead and say it. This job was for fourteen five a year. <laughs> wow. Fourteen oh, yeah. five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. As so two factors allowed for this. One, really it's my wife. Yep. Uh, Tara, I cannot <laughs> I cannot yeah, see absolute her. Absolute sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best woman in the world. 
And she said, and I almost didn't do it. I backed off, right? Because I'm like, this is the crappiest pay in the world. I'm actually taking a cut, which I wasn't even making a lot of money. Right, right. Uh, and we're going to move 1,800 miles someplace that I've never been to. Away from her family. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah, an yeah. awesome gaming group. Yeah. And she's like, if you don't take this job, you're not the man I married. Right? She knew that I was genetically predisposed yep, yep. <laughs> to do this thing and to be a part of this community. Yeah. Um, and then, luckily, no kids yet right and right. she was retail management so she could walk into any store and immediately get a quite nice paying job right and so then i took the leap and we packed up the car yep. and and drove and it's that same moment where you're like yeah. yes and hang up and then hyperventilate like crazy and what am i doing yep uh but I, but i have heard so many stories over the years of that one moment, because I get asked all the time, how do you get in the industry? Yep. And usually it's not a simple, it's a long road where you just were there at the right time. And I, yes, I made a nuisance of myself, but I was always respectful. Oh, I yeah. can always tell that even though you're a Goobing fan, I was respectful. Yep. I loved it. I loved them and the work that they were doing. Yep. And then I just was kind of in the right place at the right moment to take advantage. But then I still had to go, I'm all in. Yep. Right. Yep, Nick yep. and I were just talking yesterday that that that's actually one of the biggest things that I'm willing to throw it all in and dive into the deep end. Sure. Sure. Even if I crash terribly and horribly. Yeah. And I, I remember going to, you know, going to FASA and seeing you there and I'm going, he looks familiar. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, yes, this is a good hire. Well done. Uh, <laughs> you know, so. Well, it's been great because then Mike and I have known each other since 1988. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, the first time they brought him out and I got to sit in on one of the big story conferences and I'm just in the corner doing you know, a little happy dance. Like, I can't believe I'm here. Yeah. Um, and the fact that we still get to do that, you know, like a year ago, just over a year ago, we had yep. a new story conference. I actually think one of the best we've ever oh, had. Absolutely. It was yeah, hands glorious. Down. Yep. Uh, with the new fantastic authors that we have. A lot of old guys. Yep, and a, yep, yep. A lot of, you know, me and Lauren and Mike as super old ones. Uh, but a lot of the new ones with Michael uh, Cirovelli and Brian Young. Yep. Phil Lee and on and on. Uh, yep. Jason Schmetzer, giant shout out. He yep, is a absolutely. brilliant writer. Mm -hmm. uh, has written some of my favorite modern stuff. Yep. And John um, John Helpers, uh, John uh, Helpers putting it all uh, together. Putting yep, it all yep, together, yep. it just it goes on and on, and so yeah. it's, you know, and that was that, and and you're right, that meeting that we had a year and a half ago to to plot where we're going in the in the Ill Clan era and those things, really did harken back to those first meetings. I mean, I that I could feel, and it was because we had the because the universe got so much bigger. But now we've got so much more talent and, and looking at recruiting more talent. This is why shrapnel is your opportunity to, Absolutely. you know, to, to, to make a mark uh, so that, you know, you can be invited to do other stuff. Um, this is why I'm just, I think the future for the universe is incredibly bright. Oh, it's so bright. You know, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. And I yep. see some other names in there, Craig. I, I don't yep. mean to leave any author out. We have... We have so many of them right, now. Right, right. Uh, uh, Jason Hansen, Craig, yep, yep, and yep. on and uh, on. Tom Levine, I know, is doing yeah, stuff. And another guy from Arizona. You yeah, know. there's The just, Arizona Mafia yeah, will control Arizona this Mafia. eventually. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm all over that. Uh, but, no, again, shout out to Shrapnel. Yep. We have never had a better forum for bringing in new authors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, please submit. Uh, you're likely going to get rejected. In fact, I believe John and Phil told me that only one person ever their first story submitted to Shrapnel as a new author got accepted. Right. Everyone else has had multiple rejections. Right. You know, some of the biggest authors in the universe, in our entire world, you know, sometimes have a hundred rejection letters that they oh, sure. keep as a good I, reminder I, I of the work. Yep. Yeah, yep. right? Yep. Of, the, of the good work. I, I've got a whole stack myself. Yeah. Uh, 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 but we've just never been in a better place for the game. Uh, never a better place for the universe. Never a better yeah. place for this wonderful team. Yeah. Uh, and a, and a team that's growing. And if you want to be a part of that, uh, I saw somebody up there that said uh, you can bring the into the industry by defeating an existing industry member in single combat. 
Yeah. But you have to eat their heart afterwards. Oh, yeah. That's the tough part. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. You know, you know I, I, I might have wanted to do that back in the day. So maybe you shouldn't say that. I might have been willing. <laughs> uh, so, no. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, we're getting towards the end. Yeah. Uh, somebody just flashed me 10 minutes. I was just right. thinking that myself. Uh, if you guys have some more stories out there, yeah. um, we'd be happy to hear them. Uh, good morning. Oh, hey, Rem. Thanks yep. for joining us. I love this question here. Randall and Michael, what mech do you not like playing against? For me, it's anything that can shoot my mech out. <laughs> um, I, I would say for me, absolutely. Currently, it's the Hammerhead. Hmm. Uh, I, I play in a local uh, campaign. Uh, actually, one of the things that, uh, again, another thing about the Oak Clan, obviously I've been playing all these years, uh, but uh, the fantastic, brilliant work that Ray and Aaron and the whole team have done on the source books, right. coordinating with the fiction oh, yeah, uh, yeah. in the Hinterlands portion. I mean, the whole Oak Clan, but the Hinterlands I love to death. It harkens right back to the Chaos March mm -hmm. of the 3057, 3058 era, late FASA era. Yeah. And I wanted to run a campaign at my local game store. Shout out to Zulus. Love you guys. Um, and so I have a, a team of players uh, that particularly this year, they have are not going to have me very often. And I apologize again for that because I'm out hitting the world. Um, but I like to play against them. And, of course, my dice betray me all the time. But Bryn always plays that stinking hammerhead with that, right. uh, that uh, armor. Uh, in heavy armor, right? Uh, that just soaks endless damage, and so like I, I then just ignore it, and then shoot at other things. But then he gets in close and tears me up and punches my head off. Yeah. So I would say without a doubt that is the most annoying. And by the way, I love that mech. I just don't like what it's fielded against me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like we got a couple of questions coming up. Uh, if encounters does well enough, will there be an expansions for it? Absolutely. Uh, let's see. The only story I have to share is when the Clicks game started. Old Venture Day AP taking the time, explain the lore to me, and why some things were a big deal. I don't know if there was a question in there. Just maybe a statement. Okay. Right. Um, lady who wrote Gone with the Wind was rejected 38 times. Yeah, absolutely. You just, some of the biggest authors on the planet. Yep. Giant pile of rejection letters. Some of them didn't start writing until they were in their 50s. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean. Uh, Mike and I always, sh well, actually, sorry, I always share what Mike shared a million years ago, and it always stuck with me, is when somebody says, how do you know you're a writer? And he immediately was, are you writing? Right? And it, it, if you're not writing, then you're a writer. Don't, 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 don't worry so much about the publishing side. Yeah, yeah. Just write. Then go put yourself in the right places, but always be writing. Build in a yeah. work ethic of writing, and that will serve you well your whole life. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Randall, your your reunification tour needs to come to Texas. I am not going to be able to get everywhere. I would love to. It's not going to happen. But, yes, I have most of the last of the year that I'm still planning out what other states I can get to. But I also am heading over to Europe, uh, both in the U.K. and Ireland and Spain and France in May and June. And then Germany and hopefully Austria, maybe even Poland in uh, October. So it's just a lot going on. Uh, but I will be trying to get everywhere I can. Uh, what's your favorite newer weapon, weapon system in Battletech? Um, I would have to say the uh, Snub Nose PPC. That is, I got, and by the way, that's not really new now. That's like right, yeah, yeah. 18 years ago now, I think we introduced that thing. Uh, but, you know, when it's 40 years old, you can still call that kind of new. Uh, I love the Phoenix Hawk 7K uh, bouncing around at nine hexes, jumping into heavy woods. And then I still have short range out to nine hexes. So super fun weapon. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Don't know if you answered my Davian question. The stream was gone. But is House Davian England, France, or the U.S.? Um it was built absolutely as France, flavored, uh, England, France. Uh, I think some U.S. has bled into it over the years. It, you know, it's kind of kinda, hard. Kind of NATO. Yeah. Yeah, yep. a little yep. NATO. Yep. Yeah, I can yep. always see that. Uh, Poland, please. Again, we're going to try and work that out. Um, I had some evil plans over there, and uh, so hopefully we'll continue to work on those evil plans, guys. 
Uh, Mike Stackpole wrote some great BT novels. Of course he did. Thank you. Uh, I love the Thunderhawk mech coming out in the first uh, campaign pack. And I keep having this alarm, like, insistent. Don't forget. Don't forget. Yep. I got some meetings coming up and stuff. Uh, let's see. Linus for the weekend. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We have, uh, again, we can't do this without you guys, right? Yeah. Like, we, we can write and develop and make all we want, but if somebody isn't receiving it on the other end, we're just, you know, yelling into a vacuum. And, and so thank you guys so much. Yeah, we, we really appreciate your feedback. You know, this is, this, is, this is one of the fun, weird things about being a writer. It's a solitary, uh, it's solitary business, and most of the feedback you get from the editor is fix this, fix this, fix this. Yeah. So you could have written the greatest story in the world, and uh, you know, but all you're hearing is the criticism. Yeah, exactly. Though, though John is is, the, the, is the great bleeding, about the not bleeding doing that. red, as I like to yeah, call it. Exactly. All over your page. But it but it really means a lot when you know when somebody comes up and and says, hey, I really liked this in the book, or you got me there, or or that sort of thing. It's it. It helps us know what we're doing and getting right. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we are. Uh, you could always continue the tour in 2025. <laughs> um, I, I may, uh, but I, I really, right. Tara, once again, thank you. I really kind of promised her that the insanity of all this traveling really would be this year. Now, yeah. I'm going to continue to go to conventions for as long as I can get there. I'm going to roll in a wheelchair if I have to. But all the extra touring that I'm doing, really got to kind of confine that. Uh, yeah, and, and, one, because I, I'm leaving my family alone a lot. And two, this is still actually not part of my job. Right, right, <laughs> I'm right. doing this because I love you guys and I love it and I want to celebrate this. But I actually have other deadlines <laughs> that I still have to figure out how to do. <laughs> and as, as wonderful and as romantic all of this travel is, it is grueling. grueling. I mean, I mean, we're on. I, I mean, I go back home tomorrow, so I will have been away from home for a dozen days. Yeah, and it is. And I've got another nine days to go. Yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, you're the, just the, nuts the, doing the that. The Europe but, yeah. trip. Yep. Uh, in the spring is a uh, four weeks of right. straight travel right. every all, almost every night in a different place. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but it is. It is. It, it, it it really it, it is punishing. So cherish cherish Randall when he when he please because you have you have no idea. It's like it's like crawling over ground glass. Yeah. You know, so. no, but but again, I do it because I really want to thank this community. I think you guys are the best community in this entire industry. Yeah. Uh, and we are just at this magnificent moment, and it's all of us together doing this. So thank yeah. you so much. Uh, I think we're here at the end. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're right here at the end. Uh, Strategic Con in LA this year. I don't know that, but we will always, you know, keep sending us emails of, hey, can you come to this con? We're not going to be able to get to everyone, but we'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, thank you so much. This has been a blast, Mike. It thank has you been. For, yeah, yeah. You know, talking all it, these up. It's fun, fun, fun to reminisce and, and fun to uh, reminisce and go over yeah. all this crazy that we've and, done. And at least we're not doddering old men sitting in a bar somewhere. You know, just 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 hunching over on our bar stools, cursing everybody and no, no, back it, in our team. It's uh, it, 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 no, yeah, no. It, it's good to be able to still be here after all these years. Yep. This excited and having this much. Amazing stuff going on. Yep, yep. So thank you all. Appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. For those here at the con, thank you for coming. And I hope to see the show sometime soon. Bye, guys. Absolutely.
too much for so much which is the thing which is the ball trap that in the time I don't know now we have to look into the time of Christmas in Sri Lanka country maybe you can check uh, not I don't
doesn't make sense. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Adept yeah. Man Day 3. Uh, my name is Michael Ciro. Day 3 or Day 4? I don't even remember anymore. Day no. 4 of this. This is day. Last day. Uh, Five if you count day zero. Oh, I've been here for nearly ten days, so it's all blending together for me. But we are here with uh, back at the uh, the Six Sides of Gaming booth with Catalyst Game Labs, and we are very excited to put on a wonderful Alpha Strike game for you, the most recent in our uh, Iridani Light Horse series. My name is Michael Ciravella. I'm one of the Battletech authors. I happen to be here with an incredible group of people. I have Brent Evans, art director for Catalyst, who will help me defend the honor of the uh, Draconis Combine at the moment. I will. Beloved author Michael Stackpole, author of magnificent novels such as the Warrior Trilogy and literally everything else in the world. And Brian Young, incredible author of A Question of Survival and several incredible upcoming novels. So they will be. Um, providing the Iridani Light Horse today. This will be a straight-up battle after a uh, complicated series of betrayals and sub-betrayals and constant betrayals. So now he owns the betrayals, you know. Yeah. Now all the betrayals. Uh, but no, this is also the first game that we will be doing that will be actually Alpha Strike. Uh, it We are slotted for two hours. It may go a little faster than that, but we will certainly see. Also, forgive us, some of us are a little new to the Alpha Strike system, so we may have some questions for Tommy, our magnificent game master, who is off screen and watching over us. All right, then. So, so they're asking if Big Red was banished, but I think that he was very... Uh disappointed in the dishonor that he committed and didn't feel like coming back to the field and showing his face after what he did to you brent yeah and his cow his cow is also dishonored so uh i believe he's uh, making a run for the system jump uh hoping to hire on with an outbound crew and find his life as a way as a wayward a mercenary yeah yeah he wasn't banished but oh. uh he certainly ran with his tail between his legs yes yes I respect that quite a bit, but I must also respectfully disagree. I think he was banished, probably by me, and to be fair, there's only so many more miniatures lines he can go to. Yeah, <laughs> okay, fair. So, you know, we love him, Big Red, we appreciate you. Whenever they find your body, we will say all nice things about you. But, back to the game. Ooh. This mech is so cool. The Shiro is an amazing, beefy, powerful mech. Right we need here. more things with his hordes. I agree. I'm just, in general, as an approach. All right, so are we coming from off the board, or are we starting on the board? Gotcha. Okay. I got a seven. Brent, would you like to lead off? I would. I got a Holy four. Holy smokes, we won initiative for the first time in four days. Oh, that's, not, <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good thing, is it? I, I don't know. It didn't help us yesterday. So we we so we deploy two, four inches in. Okay. We deploy oh, two that, mechs with it. Can I have the red thingy? You absolutely. We can. deploy Dang. four inches from the uh, from the edge. From the edge. Okay. okay. And that's where we start. So we lost. We go. You want to move one? I'll move one. Certainly. This is all very much line of sight stuff too. Four inches in. I will start. The Atlas has a movement oh. of six inches. Oh, so we're just going to come in four inches. Oh, okay. Got me. So a question about the terrain, too. Is this all trees or just these two things are trees? They're all okay. trees. So this blocks line of sight, then? Okay. Okay. Cool. We are back to you. Again, uh, yeah, we're just getting to the first one, one. so don't yeah. overthink it. Well, there you go. Yeah. It's well spotted me. Okay, I did my one. Two. All right, back to you.
We got ours up. Oh, so we're doing two more. Okay. Yep. That star slayer is nasty. Yep. <clears throat> Those heavy large lasers are wicked. This question, this question might have been answered with all of the mechs to put in minis. Still, why the urban mech lamb? Uh, it was a behind closed doors. We like to prank each other quite a bit. And that was an example of uh, an April Fool's joke run amok. A very successful April Fool's joke run amok. A glorious April Fool's joke run amok. I personally think they're hilarious. I do too. And it's also hilarious to see the look on Ray Erastia's face every time he sees one. Indeed. It is the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, I, see I put six. my fourth. Okay. Good lord. Your move, Mike. I'm still trying to figure out which is which. <laughs> Uh, this is the quick draw, so I will put him right there. It's you guys again. Oh, is it? Is it? <laughs> All right. I don't know. I think the Irvies are hilarious. Oh, I and agree. We, you know, we've been playing in the battle pods. Yeah. In the Irvies. And it's a lot of fun. Back to you. Tommy, what are the heights of these buildings? Gotcha. Gotcha. Place your your last one. You yeah. guys are up. Okay, we are good to go. Let the destruction commence. Indeed. Do 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 do. So unless we roll initiative again for some reason, you guys should be moving first. Yeah, I say we go. Do you just move everything, or some of it, or is it two and two still? Two and two. Gotcha. Yeah, two and two is good. And Panther moves ten. Measuring from the front of the hex. Panther gets a TMM of two. Okay. By the way, for those of you out there viewing from home. Oh, hey, where'd you find those bases of the trees? I can absolutely use those with my Alpha Strike trees. Right. Uh, they are apparently on Thingiverse. They are very nice little bases. Those are very cool. Okay. Oh, you moved too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the bases for the trees are fantastic. Definitely. It's also just a pretty board with these fantastic maps. And Is this one of the new ones, Brent? He says yes. Ah, yes. I don't, actually don't recognize it. Nice. Oh, that's wrong. Uh, uh, the map. Is this one of the new ones? I don't think so. Okay, that's very fair. I think this is a an acquisition from the demo team as they took care of us today. Indeed. Okay, we move two. Excellent. Oops, sorry. And what's the difference in placing the movement dice on these versus uh, what's the difference in, in the movement dice on these versus classic? 
Oh, okay, cool. And that's the to hit no matter what? The targeting modifier? Okay. Oh, no problem. All right. There we go. Thank you. We're getting secret messages from outside the table. Um, oh, you, you moved your next one. So you can move two or we can move one and one each. I moved two because you were signing books. Um, no, we can move. Uh, um, where did my little, there it is. My little thinger, which is this one here. That's, that's going to be the chameleon. The, the os no, that's or the, the, the os yeah, yeah, yeah. This right. is the chameleon, that's the os -sol. Okay, and so that one can move 10 inches, right? Yep. That's the end of the... Yeah, I know, but it, it stopped at 8. Oh, oh at 8. So, yeah. Oh, no, you're good. That's why. So so it was it was the... We ran out of tape guessing at 10. Ah. Because it just flicked back into, oh, into that's that funny. slot. That is yeah. funny. What are the um the range bands? Range brackets are up to uh, 6 inches is short. Up to 24 inches is medium. 48 inches is long. Oh, okay. So we can fire a long ways. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We will be firing at each other from the first round. But if it says zero under long, you, then you, you don't have, have damage. Range weapons. Any damage. Yeah. Okay, yep. Got it. You can fire, just won't do anything. You've yeah. got one more to move, Mike. Oh, 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 okay. Um which one is this one? This is the chameleon. Star no, Slayer, I believe. Star Slayer. Star Slayer. So you've got Chameleon's a right inch, in the middle. A okay. ten inch jump. A ten inch jump. All right. And he should he should jump over there in those woods behind the building. Jump over into this, you yes, think? Yes, definitely. Oh. Okay. Oh, is that what we're doing? Okay. All right, well, that's... There we go. My TMS. Two. On the Star Slayer? Yep. Two? Yep. So, three. Three. All right. Okay. They're saying this map is cratered from red, leaving leaving all of that as a parting gift. Yes. <laughs> I'm having a tough time getting my mechs into your back arc to support you. Are you now? No need to be nervous, Brent. Just remember what happened last time when someone couldn't support you, right? Yes. And that offer, that offer, we're up to ten sea bills. Ah, <laughs> two cases of beer. Well, he sold out cheap. <laughs> TMM two. What does TMM stand for? Does anybody know? Fans want to chime in on that. Mm -hmm. Target movement modifier. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, you got one more to move, Mike. Oh, okay. I'm going to be moving these two last, I think. Yeah. Um, which makes sense. So, Star Slayer, I've already moved. Yes. The one with the winged hat. Of the, the The quick draw. And mm -hmm. he can move 10, or 16 or 10 if he jumps. Thank you for the correction. Long range is 42, he can move not 10 48. If he jumped. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can he get over there? Yes, he can. There. How much does facing matter in this? Uh, at this yeah. point, nothing. Yeah. Everybody's it's, it's, within a yeah, front yeah. arc. The line from the back of the hex, everything forward of that is is your firing arrow. Okay. It's, it's your Excellent. up next. I've only played Alpha Strike once, and it was on the stream at Gen Con against... Uh, it was it was uh, against you, Mike, yep. wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, it was. And I don't recall that going very well for you. Not through any strategery on my end, just the dice were in my favor. The dice did do exceptionally well. So he's going to run 
into the trees at the very end of it, which I believe will cut, it's like an inch and a half, so it'll cut that movement by half when going in the trees, I believe. I believe so. Which will get me right there. Team M1. Three there, and you hit one. Thank you. Dude, how do you get a Team M3? Oh, I've got several Team M3s. On the Dragon? Wow. On the Dragon, yep. That's fantastic. Jeez. All right, back to you, gentlemen. You got, yeah, one more this turn. Yep. I had a lot of fun making these cards up for the Fox Patrol. Because the master unit list, you yes, can just indeed. yeah go through and make your own alpha strike cards. The master unit list is pretty so awesome. So he can go indeed. twelve, right? And I'm doing. And he's jumping. He and if he, he if he wants to jump, he can jump. All right. Well, where would that put me? And then uh, sure. What the hell? And so he will jump to there. So that would be a uh, red three on him. Now he's got the four clan LRM. No, that's going right? to be. Oh, which uh, one is that? Uh, he should be able to hit the good from range. Yes. The chameleon. Yeah, Only red two three. Damage, red the three. quick draw. This may this actually one. be the uh, auto cannon, light uh, auto cannon no. version. That one should be oh. a four, actually. Oh, four. Okay. Well, that's my fault. In an effort not to fight no, the good. math, you may be better off targeting the Caesar. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was kind of what I was thinking right there, especially from the dragon. Is that's it back so. to us? Yep. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yep. You are wrong, sir. Yes, he is. Indeed. Okay. There's one. TMM is two. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's it's three on three. Uh, well, uh, we've got six mechs, mechs each, so I guess it's, uh, yeah, it's just a lot. John Helfers, can you go grab me a dice puck, please? Yeah, right. and give me one. If there's a Kellhounds one, or a Death Kangaroos one. Death Kangaroos. Yeah. yeah. The Battletech uh, dice bucks selling for, I believe, $50 each. <clears throat> I believe so. Get six of your favorite dice in a handy carrying case. Can I get the scissors back, please? There we go there. All right. Uh, it's up to you two, and then Michael have the last two moves. Wonderful. What are the, so so all of these mechs have like special stuff on them. Thank what you. is the what is the special stuff do typically? Okay. Okay. Energy moves As they're speaking about right now on the side, we've got some okay. special abilities, of course, on every card right there that will help us for our purposes. Okay. This one's indirect fire, though, right? Oh, well, he left. Whoa. 
turn it in. Okay. So, Tommy, the skill number is our gunnery skill, right? And then uh, the IF is... The skill number is our gunnery and skill, And so right? I can have other folks... I believe yeah. so. And what about IF2? Yeah, it should be. Yes. Yep. Skill is okay. one. Okay, got right, it. So you yes. loaded up nicely for us. <laughs> We've got some some good people. So you. your last two moves, Mike? The Deadly Flea and Jenner. There you go. The Deadly Flea and so Jenner. So you want to... I'm curious how far out 24 inches is, because that's the difference between medium and long. Oh, I think almost everybody's at medium. Medium. Oh. Can I get that Caesar right there, Brian? I can get that Caesar. Nice. Which Ooh, means that they won initiative, so I believe they get to shoot first. Oh, no, you got to move your last units. Yeah, you yeah. move the last units here. So and the firing in this is... The firing in this is simultaneous, like classic, yes, right? right? So yes, we'll be able to trade fire and yeah. We lost, so we get to shoot first. That way if you destroy a tank, they want to go shoot it to take advantage. Oh that, that is very clever. <clears throat> There's some okay. some depth there. So that if the second player wants so to overheat could go after they're destroyed, uh, for when they're destroyed, they can. Nice. To, but... So how how's your? Uh, we've got several units in the middle. I didn't know what your target of priority was going to be. Well, I think I'm going to go have some fun with that Caesar for my center units right here. Okay. And so he that would be a jump. So you 14, get the red die. You just got ran. To. So oh, he can't. Uh, his uh, movement. Dramatically changes when going through trees. Oh, okay. Uh, so, but all right, the, just to get through the trees. The Jenner has the jump, though, which makes you harder to hit anyway. Okay, well, there we go. Yeah. So, a Jenner is good no matter where you go. Yeah. So, and I add one to that to his TMM for jumping. Right. Yes. Okay. And the flea, who does not have jumping. But no, goes but he can zip a all the hell way of a stuff. lot. Yeah, yeah. no. He's super fast. And he's got a TMM of four, which makes him super hard to hit. Right. So basically, yeah, you can just wrap it around. You can just wrap it around. Yeah. Path you want to use to go around stuff. <laughs> well, I'll just. There we go. I'll just pop him up beside that over there. Nice. Nice, nice. Nice. Couple of fours over there. Okay. Yeah, I want to make things easy for you. Yep. So then uh, you all start firing first. Okay. It sounds like. Okay. So we fire first. Hold that there. You want to go first or shall I? Uh, you know, let's do this collectively together to so make sure that we're all double checking each other backs. Or you really don't know what we're doing. He's going to shoot you in the back. That's, That's your fine. Of. Whatever, I can take it. Okay, so he you his, his, his gunnery skill is a one. A Roka Rokubi's first yep. gunnery skill is a one. He was going to be tight firing across the field over there at that two on the flashman for medium range. I got to where I think we can this see one? each other. Uh, uh, nope. nope. Oh, no, 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 this one. For no, no. This yeah, one. There, there you go. So firing there. He is a one. He moved. I assume that's... Two. Can he see him? I can't see him at all from here through this What's building. What's the modifier for he, he moved forward? He didn't jump. He just... Okay, so he's a one. And then just range and the target. Okay, his target number is two, so that's a three. So Quick question, though. The Rory Kubi, uh, Brian's wondering if he can see them with that building in the way. I we have laser. I'm looking at it Based from on... this side, and can I'm not, see I, I can't see him at all. But Okay. I tried to line it up when I placed, but if I didn't get it right, Mike. then that's fine. Uh, then he will shoot over here. Not sure. Okay. I didn't mean to do that. I just, I was no, like. No, you move first. I, I moved to where I, I actually, that's why I backed off the building because I thought I was getting around that other building. But if I didn't go far enough, that's good. Because I didn't think I had a shot on him 
at all. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, in our homebrew rules or like, okay, you don't get to like eyeball. You just do the best you can on the fly and go. So here we go. He's a one. Um, Targeting the flea has a four. Medium range uh, is, it would be seven. Uh, I'm sorry. He's a one. He's got a four, so that's five. Medium range makes it seven. So you right. just need sevens on two dice? I believe I just need sevens on two dice. That's right. right. Okay. What was okay, that? But they're my dice, so if I get it on no... Then uh, okay, there's one, and there's two. All right, so two damage on the flea, and on the flea that damage comes off just right th there. The white, this the, one here, both white dots. Okay, Panther, right. skill is a two. He moved, but there's nothing there. It's medium range, so four target is a four, so that's eight. This is medium range. He has two sets, so he'll be also right rolling two dice. Yeah. That's a no. And a yes, so one damage to the flea from the All panther. Right. Oh, and that's a possible. Oh, did I kill the flea? You killed yeah. the, flea. So you the third hit. Yeah. Excellent. So wait, this is how many how many rolls you get? Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, perfect. The avalanche will be firing over here at the Jenner. Uh-huh. Uh, that is a two... Right, look the correct one. There we go. The skill is three, uh, seven. Right. And then range would make it nine. And medium range, I have three. So it'll be three sets of dice. Okay, so three sets of dice. Needing nines. No. No. And no, missed by one. All right. Okay. So those guys all went. Moving over here. I'm thinking the Ost. I agree. Okay. So, no Dachi on the Ost. No Dachi. Skill is a three. At medium range, that's uh, plus two. So, five, six, seven. So, sevens. Four rolls on sevens. Does that look right? Yes. Okay, four rolls on sevens. There's one, two, two. Three, three, four. four. So four hits Ooh. from the Nodachi on the Ostol. And that just takes down four okay. amps. Just four pips. I can take care of it if you want to sign those. Okay, sure. We're still signing books as we're playing. We are multi talented. Yes. Now I'll admit this one may be a problem. This one hits trees as it goes through. Yes. I think that would make it harder if than if he just shot across and hit Plus the flashman. One. Um well I would keep going on him. You've got two mechs right there. You may be able to take out that. There you uh, are, sir. Okay, the yes. second question is I I don't know if the Atlas is actually at twenty four or not. Can we measure Let's that? Let's find out. Brian. Because he may be out of range. I do not know. Looks like the Atlas is out of, well, it'd be long range. Yes. But the... Uh, but he does have, he, he can do it. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll just put these two. We'll also target that. Excellent. The intent, unless something goes terribly wrong. All right. So, he will go. He is a one, two, three, four, five, six for range. Yep. He has three rolls on sixes. Yes. Uh, it's six because he's, his skill is a one. So yep. one, two, three, four, five, six for range. Thank you for checking me. So first one hits. Second one hits. No. So two damage from the Hitatsume Kozo on the Ost. Okay, so two There's points. Two more, yeah. Two more. And then the Atlas. His skill is a three. It will miss the trees. Four, five. And then range is long range for this one, so it's nines. So he has four rolls on nines. At least that's the way it looks. Does okay. that sound right? Skill. Skill is a three. Yep, okay. So four rolls on nines. Nope. 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 
And no. All right. That's my all mine. Fair enough. Thank you very much for coming. Okay. I'm going to uh, start with the Grand Dragon. It's got a three. We're at 24 inches from the uh, Caesar in the back right there. Uh, the Grand Dragon is a three. Four for your movement. Five, six for the range. That should be sixes. I've got three needing sixes. Hit. Hit. Miss. So two hits on the Caesar. Two hits on the Caesar. Is there critical misses in this, just like there's critical hits? Nope. Okay. Okay. Going to Jackalope 1, is, which we will, I believe that's... Gotcha. Actually, that's Jackalope 2 right there. So, <laughs> we have skill 3, 4 going through the trees. That doesn't look like 5 inches deep, so we should still be able to... So, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for range. Okay, he's also got a three at medium range. So seven hits. Hits. And that's hits with a critical. Hits with a possible critical. And hits. Like, and the possible crit. Eight. Eight. So that's three hits. Three hits. Three yeah. damage, and then what's the weapon hit do? Yes. Yeah, what does the weapon hit do? It's just a weapon hit. Okay, so then that does minus one damage each. Okay. Oh, minus one damage each. Okay. Okay, the jackalope, the other jackalope. This one's a little weird for me. Most of the things are the same. Uh, so three, four for the building, five for the woods. There's no modifier for the building. Oh, yeah. There's no building for your purpose. I, that's that's why I should check, and that's why yep, we do this. Yep. So three, four for the woods, five, six, seven. Same thing. So three potentials. One hits. One misses. One hits. Okay. So, so two, two hits. hits. And the Shiro. <clears throat> Uh, at long range. At long range. Skill of one. Two. Two. And three, range. four. So needing fours. for. Uh, hold on. Long range would be five, six, right? Uh, he's still medium. Uh, oh, no, you are correct. He's at that long one range. Is, yes. Oh, sixes. Yeah, so he needs sixes. So first one hits. Yep. And that's Thanks. on the... Uh, still on the same one. On the Caesar. Yeah. On the, oh, on the Caesar. Yeah. No changing the fire yet. And hits. Two hits. Cool. <clears throat> then we have the Deku. Yes, he can see him. Uh, I need to know if that's medium or long. This was, right, was that right on there? This was the line. Perfect. He was at 24, so that would be long range. Sounds good. So then it's just going to be long range for one. Um, so three. <laughs> three. He has a sword. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Needing eights. On this guy? Oh, oh no, no. Still on the Caesar. Caesar. All, Caesar. Yeah, all yeah. firing at the Caesar. So, one hit. Okay. And then where did even the Phoenix Hawk go right there? Okay. So, why, why change the system right there? Well, I, I jumped. Is that? That makes it one harder. Plus one harder, yes. Plus three harder. Okay. So, three. Oh, it's three harder. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And range. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes. Critical. Still on the Caesar still? Still on the Caesar. All for the Caesar. No. Nope. Cool. Okay. That is all our fire. Our turn? It is. It is. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Go ahead and start so I can figure out how to do this. Okay. So we're going to take the Sagittaire uh, that direction. Let's check the range. I'm, I'm assuming it's long range because if, well, it could be close. There's a Sagittarius out there? I think you mean oh, the no, green dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that what? I don't know. It says Sagittarius here. Oh, yeah. that's, is, if that's a, that can be a priority back, mech. So that's going to be long. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, so you would have oh, been on a, oh. I'm 11. 11. Yeah. So, thank you. And thank you for anyone who chimed in to tell us we were doing wrong. Please, we need the help. Please do. We'll take so, all the help we can get. The Sagittaire, we're at a uh, skill one, so that's one. Then we're going to go... And did you jump? Yes. Okay, so that's so two, three. three. Which is fine. Okay. And then... He's got a three, so that's Let me six. go with the guy for the two. Okay. So that's five. Uh, you'll, this would be long range. And then long range, okay. which makes it nines. Okay. Yeah, awesome. And I've got two shots at nines. Misses. Okay. Okay. This guy... Um, it's going to be long range again, but I've got four shots. Same mech. Uh, and we'll just roll this. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be easier to hit because he didn't jump. And he has a skill one. So I've got one, two, three, and then range is seven. So I need sevens to hit okay. on four long range hits. Sounds good. So That's a great hit, mech. miss, miss. So two hits. Okay. So two pips. Okay, and this was on him. That guy. On the die yep. die two. Then we've got Flashman. Flashman, which I believe is going to be at medium range. That's going to be medium range. Uh, assuming you're still shoot firing here. Uh, well, I'm going to fire. You're firing here? Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, oh, I can't hit those. Jack For some reason, I was thinking like, oh, those guys are just whatever. But I actually, I think I might shoot them. Both of these guys to that jackalope. Okay. Sounds good. So the flashman to that jackalope. This one you'll hit, miss the trees. That one I think you'll hit the trees. Yeah, I think they're right. It's going to be partial cover both yeah. ways, right? Because yeah. I've got the building here. Yeah. Or the, the trees, trees oh, here. Yeah. So it, it's. Yep. Uh, you know, half trees is inches of trees, or is it just you go through the trees? It's just one. Just through the trees, one. Just one? Okay. Okay. So the flashman at medium range. Skill three. Uh, One, five, six. Six, and then seven for the the terrain, for the this. Uh-huh. Yep. And then, and then nine medium. for range. Yep, so yep. nines, uh, and I've got four shots, so four at nine. And that's a critical, right? Yep. Yes. So I've got two misses. Two hits and one and of them critical. is a critical. Okay, so two hits on the jackalope. Yep, yep. And then go ahead and and then what do I need to get for the crit? Uh, you're ro just rolling the crit to l find out what location got hit. Okay, so I'm just rolling. Uh, it's a seven. He did. He seven. got a seven. Yeah, he rolled a seven on the crit chart. Okay. Movement point. Got it. And then the Valkyrie. Has got uh, two at medium range, and it's the same skill level, so it's going to be the same to hit. So nines to hit from the Valkyrie. Except that he jumped. Except that he jumped. So it's actually. So what, what, what's his what's a skill three? Yeah. So it's going to be jumped would be five. It's going to be elevens. Okay. Both miss. Okay. Then the Caesar is going to take a shot at that gentleman there. Got it. So the Caesar has a skill of two. That's long range. Or no, that was medium range. Yeah, Those this was medium. exactly medium range for this guy. Okay, so uh, skill of two. Then four for the range. Four for the range. And seven for, for the so, modifier. So sevens. Yeah. Sevens on four. Hit. Miss. Miss. Hit. So two hits. Yeah, so two hits. Very nice. <clears throat> Good uh, job. And that's uh, that's it for. Uh, no, I've got the Shadow Hawk. Okay. Shadow Hawk could definitely fire. I forgot we've got six mechs, not five. So yeah. the Shadow Hawk, uh, same thing I'm going to have. It's skill three, but he, he jumps, jumps so that's six. five. Oh, uh, sorry. You're right. Five. Two. You're right. So five. five. Two for the range. So that's seven, uh, and, and then, then ten, eight, nine, for, ten. The, for the defense model. So tens, three tens. Uh, seven. No, miss, miss, okay. miss, miss. So it's your turn, Mike. 
Okay, so might as well shoot the flea first. Yeah. So how does the overheating work? Like, yeah, this would be a chance for the flea to do it. <laughs> is that is that what that is? So he doesn't. So he can't. Okay. All right. Right, so range is. Right, you might need to help him out with the range. Uh, we're medium. Uh, who do you want to shoot? A uh, panther. Yeah, medium. Yeah, okay. medium truly, range. You're good. Is that guy in close range? No, in close range six is six inches. inches. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so medium yeah, all range. these guys are medium. You can shoot anybody you want, and you can see all three of them. Okay. So yeah. So medium range to the panther. Okay. Um. So you get so skill two. Skill two. He's got a two on there, so two, that's four. Right. four. Medium, and range, and is medium range is six. six. So you need sixes. You need. Sixes, and I got two shots at sixes, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Hit. There's one. And there's Hit. two. Hit. Two on the panther. So two if anyone knows there. how dangerous the panthers are, it's Michael Stackball. If anyone knows how dangerous panthers can be, it's you. Well, there we go. Uh, yeah, we can take all right. off the map, well, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he can go away because he's dead. Um, yeah, you want to go ahead and fire the Jenner there too? Oh uh, yeah, might as well go ahead and hit the Jenner on the on the thing. Okay. Jenner skill is Jenner's skill is he's a two. He jumped his four. Right. Defense is two. That's six, and then range would be eight. Does that sound right? Sounds yeah. like it means. Okay. And, and how many shots do you have at medium? Three. Three. Yep. Three six. So one. There's got it. There's hit one. It. Nope. Okay. Got it. Nice. So two. Two, two. two more. Two more. Okay, he stripped it. All right. And then you want to measure to see if you if you want to target here. If we may be right in middle, medium range. It oh, should with be the close. Off. Yeah. I think that's definitely medium. Yeah, yeah. it's within 24 is back here, so you can yeah. both these yeah. are medium. Might as well shoot with the Ost then. Okay. So the Ost is it's two, two, two and two, so six. Or... Yeah, so you jumped. Right. That's not the Ost. Yeah, no, you didn't jump. So okay. two, four, and then two for range, so that's six. Yeah, six sixes. And the Ost at medium's got three shots. Do it. Oh, hold well up. Wait, let me see. No, three. Yeah, you want to hit all three. It's all structure. Okay, so sixes. First one. You got Hit. it. Hits. Second one hits. Yeah. Third one. Boom. Oh, those magic kill. Um, are those kill hounds dice? Or no, no, no those, are, those are Wolf Dragoon's dice. Excellent. Even more dangerous. For there we go. So he goes off the map, right? He goes off. And then you've got the quick draw and the... Chameleon to shoot left with, and this guy. Right. Can I would like to make it very clear: I did not he kill can that man. Straight on, and it's it's going to be long range though. No betrayal. No, no. Can you see the guy behind the building? I don't. He's partially obscured. It, is it to center dot, or is it any part of the hex? Okay. Partial cover. Okay. Well, let's calculate it out then for. Uh, okay, so he's got, which one is this? This is the Star Slayer? Yeah. Skill 2, uh, 4 for jumping. That's an 8 because he's there, and then a 9. 10 for, for range. I was I haven't even started the range because he's, oh. he's got the 4 Oh, already. you're right, 9 for partial cover, so and then 11 for range. you might want to go with the long range for him. Yeah, yeah, anyway, okay. Anyway, because. Uh, it's going to be, yeah, be better. Yeah. Um, but let's see on the Star Slayer. He doesn't, oh, have, he doesn't have any long, he doesn't range. Have any long range weapons. So, oh. so, so that's he's in medium range. What about this guy straight away center field? Uh, I think the tree this, this, building's in the this way. This blocks him completely. Building's in okay. the way. So partial he, cover for him is that was medium range though. This yeah. was medium range. Okay, so he's the only shot you've got. Okay, so and you might as well roll it. So it's it's uh, four, eight, nine. 10, 11. So you need 11. He hit. may also be able to go over there. I don't know that it would give him any different, though, because he's also got partial cover. And um, really, three Mon Friars is probably not yeah, going to no, it's, it's going to be about the same. Okay. Yeah. So, 11s is. Go for it. Uh, and, got, and the Star Slayer at medium three. got three. So, 11. Three times. No. Nope. 
Nope. Nope. Nope. All right. Um. So. And then you've got this oh, guy and no, oh, you've got him, this yeah. guy. Right. And he's got uh, a straight the quick shot. draw, right? And the quick draw, yeah. And the quick draw, but I don't know. Well, the quick draw can be shooting there, but that's going to be yeah. long range. I mean, you'll hit trees, but that's it. Yeah. I assume that they can see each other. Can he see him? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Six, six, seven. There's some woods in the way, but yeah, that's going to be that's going to be long 10, range. 10, 11, 12. So from the quick draw, it that, might not be. It might be medium. Let's measure if it's it out. medium, you can hit. If it's long, you don't have a shot. It is medium. That is medium. Okay, so okay. you've got four shots at, uh, so you've got three, four, five for jumping, five, six, one for co uh, partial cover, so that's seven. Uh, medium range is two, so that's nine. So you need so you you've four, got shots four, nine. four shots Do at it. nine. Okay, so let me. John should have brought us all dice pucks. Uh, nope. He should have. Apparently, he doesn't love everybody the same amount. Well, we'll just have him next time he comes by. Uh, one so you got hit. One. one hit. One hit. One on the Nanachi. Well, you need to understand, John, this is his form of betrayal. <laughs> okay. And now this guy here chameleon. Uh, might as well be doing the same. Yep. Yeah. Thing. Yep. And, and that so that's is the chameleon. That's the so chameleon. Skill two. Skill two. You jump for four. He's right. got a two. I jump for three. Or, well, no, 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 no. Oh, that's, it's four. only got it, jumping. Got it, got it. Only does for, right, for right. what it's worth. This one it will pick up, I think, trees a little. This one won't. Oh, that's You'll true. have to double check. It may be better math going here. Right, right, but right. But it's better to supply your target. So you, either way, uh, not sure which way you want to go. Um, if that one's further away from the chameleon. I think this is one the, easier to hit. The medium, though, the medium range is going to be three shots, one way or the other, and long is only one. Oh, yeah, no, this so, is medium yeah. range. Oh, it is medium yeah, range. Medium. Then, yeah, shoot yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, skill of two, medium is two. Two, two so, so eight, six, six, eight to six, hit. Uh, eight chameleon hit. jumped. So eight's to hit, yeah. Skill is two, jumped is two, four, six, yeah, eight. So you're totally right. right. Yeah. And I get uh, three shots at an eight. Eight. Okay. Hit. I'm so glad we're all kind of relearning this together. Hit. It's a fun game to relearn and yeah. so quick. You miss. Two, two hits. Okay, so two hits. Two hits. Well done. Yep. Is that everybody? I think that's yes, everybody. That's everybody. Okay. So we clear the dice. Oh, so nice. we clear them. There's no uh, right. physical yet. So, well, I guess that's classic. Sword. Okay, now dice. This is where we want to roll better than the bad guys. You ready, Mike? Why is he talking to our dice like that? Oh, my goodness. We want initiative again. They, they, yes. They critically wanted us to go first. I am absolutely going first. I'm absolutely rolling next time. All right, so we've each got one mech off. That's good. Yep. They were the crappy mechs anyway. Well, yeah, but I think his panther was a higher value than the flea. I think most anything was a higher value than the, the than the flea. I'm, hey, look, I'm taking any victory I can. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Okay. No. And hey, when man. do we get to deploy this? Don't run into me. <laughs> It was in our tray. <laughs> and we're just moving one each, uh, two each per side. Yeah, this yes. Is there um, physical attacks? In alpha? Yes. <clears throat> you don't do both. Oh, okay. And the physical attack is just one or two for the arms? Question on ruling, just so I know. Um, I assume that the Atlas's head can see over the building. Is that? Okay. And I assume that 
I have to be right up to the building gate, partial cover. Being back an inch doesn't. Land strike from the mech on your face to you. So, so right now, from the oxo, if I go down like this, you need to have partial cover. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You too. Okay. One word or two? One word. Okay. So, John, Brent and I were like, why don't we get dice pucks? We didn't ask for them. Oh, can we? I don't know. It's Brent. Yeah. Betrayal. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you. Ooh, thank you. Well, actually, they're two different ones, so. Let's put them in the middle. So that'll be short for those two guys. Okay, so. How would you feel if I used some of my guys to wrap around and see if I can roll this side? Go for it. Okay. I don't know why we're whispering. What's we're left? on camera. And I was asking about uh, That's very true, but that's usually the case no matter Technically, what. Technically, ELH, if they got it, yeah. since we are playing the air on the light horse. Yeah, well, see? If not, I do love those bases for the trees. Those they are the gorgeous. Tools. They are fantastic. I'm so digging the little slideable tops. The, on the slideable buildings. tops on the building is nice to hide your dice in. Actually, some of these dice bucks run fantastic. Mike is running one right now, and he's got, I don't think I've seen lower than an eight. Might have been doing pretty well, too, but of course, they're Highlanders. There so you go, sir. I can choose not to jump. I can move, I can walk or yeah. jump. Yeah, you do not have to, yeah, you okay. don't have to jump. Because, like, some of them will say, like, you've got this movement for walking and that one for jumping, but this one's just. 12 jump, and I was like, do I have to jump at that well, point? You no. Can walk or jump the same distance, okay. you're totally fine. So it's it's your move now. All right, up to us. Would you mind moving? Do you want yeah, to move I, I can definitely do two. Okay. You do your thing. Actually, I can move one if you want me to. Nope, I've got it. I got it? No okay. worries. So this scenario, we're just shooting the snot out of each other. Yes. We didn't want to get too complicated here. Glory uh, and the destruction of, of uh, each other. These 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 metal dice do roll well. I'm I'm pleased. I like them, and they look good when you do it. Oh, you sorry. Yeah. Ooh, I've been giving a given a gift from above. What could it be now? What could it be? Did you just move two? Oh yeah. Oh, I was gonna say is that um, not? Yeah. Uh, do you want to move two, or you want me to move two? Um, um, go ahead. You you can go ahead and move. Okay. Caesar, we've got six. Yeah, what era are we playing in? I don't even know. That's a good question. It's in, this is from actually one of the latest Immortal Warrior videos. <laughs> this, was a, this was a centerpiece battle. Well, yeah. that'll explain why my guy is exactly. short in the middle of the battlefield. Exactly. Well, I'm going to say if it's Shiro, it's either Jihad or later. Maybe even Dark Age or later. It's just feel nice. Right, is that two? That's two. Uh, no, that's no, that's one. That's, that's just one. Just one. Um, that guy is my Shadow Hawk. I'm not used to looking for the dice. I'm like, how many hexes can he move? Or not the dice, the measuring tape. Yeah. And other mechs don't count as partial cover, right? Correct. No. So 
So now it's your your turn. Okay. You need me to go more? I can. Um, I'll go at least one. Um, all right. So he. It's gonna get ugly fast. Right. Right, that's the good part of it. So he can step out of trees and then step back in them if he wants. That would put him right there. These are so satisfying. They really are. That would give him a TMM of only one, but he's in trees, so that would be two. But I'm only putting one on there. Back to you, gentlemen. Boy, you got quite a party on your side of the board. Mm. You may even be at short range over there. Mm -hmm. Uh, what era are we playing in? Something later than Jihad? Oh, we're playing in Ilkhan? No. We are playing in Ilkhan. Oh, I didn't even see that. I'm looking forward to my Crescent Hawks dice when the Mercs... I know. All the dice that came in, that are coming in for these are gonna... They're so cool. These are actually the dice from the Kickstarter that I stole from Randall Bills when he was showing us earlier in the show. Thank so, you, Jeremy yeah, Dave, for trying to save me there. I appreciate it. Is that two? That yep. is two. I'll know I've made it when there's a Fox Patrol dice puck. That is fair. <laughs> <laughs> and I would never roll with any other dice. Okay. That's not true. I actually, I really want a Jade Falcon uh, TMM of two puck, but they seem to be popular. They do. <clears throat> so we have to move two. I can move a second one if you need me to, or you can go. Oh, no. I, I, my, flank's pretty taken care. Uh, my flank's pretty taken care of at that point. Friend, as the art director, yes. Um, you know, if... Uh, If you're within one inch and cannot shoot the unit, that would be a physical. Okay. I should be safely outside then, but still in his rear arc, correct? Correct. Which I believe would give him a second, uh, an additional set of dice to roll. Being in the rear arc? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Like, what? what if, G, if GE's Falcons wanted their own uh, new logo... Just to differentiate them. You just got to tell me. Okay. And tell me what you want if you have an idea. Because if you write it in the novel, I'm going to need those details. Okay, I believe you have five left. I believe we have two left. Three. Three, three. left. So that works. All right. So we got to move two. I may be wrong on my math. One, two, three, four. Maybe you have four left. No, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, yes. Yeah, you know, we both lost one, so that would make sense if we both had. And it's their turn to move, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. yep. <clears throat> so that makes sense. Um, I think the Ossol should move to like right about there. So he's basically going to die this turn. Does target. shooting in the back gives you an extra set of dice? It gives you an extra set it of gives dice. Gives you an extra paradise. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So so I mean, an his extra choice shot. is his choice is to hide behind this building, and since they're still going to be moving people. It's not going to matter. And you I might could... want to hide behind it and be in a six well, because that's... those guys can still move up. Okay, there we go. So that would be a walking. Um, he can move ten. So What's this, TMM is two? TMM is two. So, yep. Uh, so there is that one. Yeah. Okay, so for the melee special ability with the... Uh, so... Tommy. So for the melee, spe like it says melee ability down here under special, and on my Rokurakubi, which has got a sword, so I assume that right. that equates that. 
And what does that do if we decide to do melee instead of firing? What's the distance between him okay. and that red one? That's going to be about eight inches. What's that? That's going to be about eight inches, so it's still medium range. Okay, so his size is a one. <coughs> yeah, that's about eight inches. Oh, okay. So if you move so to three. there, and if I'm in the you're in short arc? range. But that's the star slayer. Right. So Let's yeah, medium. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's move him to there. And then that's uh. His TMM would be uh. Two. Uh, TMM is two. So I got a question too. I've got like the flashman has. <clears throat> It so says rear to, one one. Do something drastic and take. That means I can get one attack. Does that means, mean an attack? Who be over here on these three? Uh, whichever one you think will be able to get a kill, at that point. I've got uh, some nice. I've got a nice firing line here that's only going to be made worse by the grand dragon moment momentarily. Uh, okay. Probably going to lose that jackalope, but. <clears throat> Oh well. Okay. Some extra damage on that flash man. It's an extra thing. It's cool. an extra thing. Getting your dragon in there. Do, I, do you want to take him? I'm like, are you gonna want to target the hostile or? Oh no 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 no. Are we? Uh, we no, no 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 no. He's we here to here. Two. You move two. Yep. Got three so left. I would subtract one to okay. shoot him behind. We've got, from we've got the three crazy. left. Looks like. Oh, oh right can here. You move the dragon now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> I, I'm feeling a little bit of hostility from you, Michael. Just a bit. Really, I thought you were a head. much nicer man. Oh, you did. Oh, he's very polite about it. No, well, that's did. a good point. I am honored to be able to say we know no. We've known each other long enough now to know that isn't true. Actually... Hostility, heavens. That's one way to cover your six. Yep. And I believe that's okay. back to you, gentlemen. Okay. Back to you. Got it. Your last three? Yep. Or do... It is. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I love yeah, it when he gives be, me the answer I was looking for. Back, so we move, you've got that's one more That's what I wanted to hear. You got one more. To I go. got one to go, and you got three. Right. So we move so two, we and then move they move one, and then... and then I'll move one, and you'll move one. All right. Uh, does that one got any damage on it? Yes. Okay. All right. And yeah, you've hit it for two so far. Fox Patrol Dream Dice look like. I mean, they would look just like these, but with the Fox Patrol logo on them, and they'd probably be like. The big ones right. would probably and, and be. Range to him is going to be what? It's going to be medium range. Well, you haven't moved yet, so you can move. You, well, you can move. No, no, I'm just. It. I'm asking right now. If I don't medium move right now, right now it's be medium, medium range. Absolutely. Okay. If you just stay right still, yeah, totally right. medium range. And then yeah, it'd probably be the rust, the rust red for the big dice and white yep. for the little ones. So if I don't move him, then I get a shot over there. He's already taken damage. Um, you think that's a good move, or should we be, you know? Pushing back over on this side and let the thing him is, rot. This is going to get ugly, but he can also start flanking us. So if you take care of him and sweep around, okay, you're still going to end up with that atlas. But right, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's probably better for us to just start eliminating units where we can. Yeah, if you're going to. But gonna... that's why I'm thinking the concentration of stuff over here. It's going to draw all that stuff. So if you sweep around. That could be good. But we're telling them this, so now they're going to expect it. If you right. do wrap this side, yeah, you know, then technically you could actually come around and flank us. Yeah. The Jenner's fast. Well, admittedly, the Quick Draw's fast. So you got options. Come on, dude. It's a game of blowing stuff up. <laughs> you got five yeah, minutes, minutes, but I like to blow it up. I like to blow it up. I like to blow it up intelligently. Yeah. It's gonna be funny if the Alpha Strike game takes us longer than yeah, the classic two, games. Right. Yes. And which one is this one again? That's the That's chameleon. chameleon. That's the chameleon. I'm learning to tell them all apart by exactly so where if he jumps and the how. So chameleon up on that building, can he actually kick the Nodachi in the face? 
<laughs> Damn. That'd be cool, though. That'd be very yeah, epically cool. Nobody, That'd be a bold move. Nobody lets me have any fun. Come on, man. Come on, man. All right. Gotta go. It was fast, kid. Fast play. Fast play. No. Don't rush me. <laughs> Do not rush me. Because I will, I will figure out how to buy him and yeah. stab you in the back again. Yeah. Yes. Tell me about it after you've moved. Come on. <laughs> um... And he can jump, so I'm gonna jump him back there. Okay. Uh, I think that's fair, and I'm gonna leave him stand, stay put. Okay. So. Awesome. Yeah, just leave him standing. Yep. So, so that means blue die, blue die on the quick draw. Blue die on the quick uh, that's draw, that's and his quick draw him. And red die on the chameleon. So three here, and uh, two on that one. Okay, so three there, two there. All right. You get to go. You get your last one. Your little sneaky guy. I can't even see what he is. Line of sight is blocked for me as well as my mech pilots. This is going to be so spectacularly glorious if it works. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's always bad when Brent starts cranking out the measuring tape. Oh, no. You do have a rear firing arc, so you could shoot. It won't save you. But you can shoot him in the face, at least. Well, there is that. TMM is four. And I'm in oh, the he can't shoot him because he's base to base? Okay. Oh, so he's just going for the physical attack. Yeah, because he's got a sword or a knife. Right, right, right. Jenner. Okay, so move your Jenner and we can start shooting oh, at each other. Oh, you move my Jenner right there. Oh, that's true. Except he wouldn't be able to. Oh, he couldn't physical there. No. Right. But please, I don't. please move your Jenner right there. Well, apparently I have. So. Um, And that for the Jenner will be. It's going to be a three. Okay. So is he too close to shoot me? No. It's okay. It's, it's going to be glorious. It's going to be right. glorious. So you all attack first. Yes, That's right. Do. do you want to do your glory I'll, first? I'll do the glorious glory. sword charge. Yes, yes. Here we go. So uh, he said physical was one. I ended up with four shots at the back of the quick draw. Okay. Am I right? I guess. You do one roll for four damage. Yes. Not four different tries. Melee. Okay. How do I roll to see if I hit it or not? Hi. What's your skill? One. And he's got a three on him. Yep. Four. He doesn't get the benefit of the trees. He's in one. He's in one. So five. So five. You need A5. I need A5. Come on, dice. Yes. Yes. All right. So four points. Four points. Totally worth it. It absolutely was. Yep. Okay. Somewhat less than epic. Yeah. Uh, he yeah, but, yeah. is firing at the quick draw as well. All right. I believe that's going to be medium, but let's measure because it's going to be close. <sighs> yeah, 19 inches. Okay. All right. Cool. So that is the KCON shirt for this. Uh, he is a this one. KCon. Okay. Medium range is plus two, two, three. He's got a three, which would be six. And then is it plus one for the trees? Yes. Seven. Okay, so I need three sevens. There's one. one. Two. two. Just two. So two. So two on so the quick two. draw. That was close. That was very close. Quick yeah. draw, quick draw, quick draw. Two more. Yep. He the avalanche is also firing. Alright. Uh his skill is a three. Right. Uh, three is six, seven for the trees, medium range, eight, nine. Is okay. that right? Yep. Okay. Let's try the new dice. Missed eight. by one. Missed a lot. Hit. Missed. Oh, I needed a nine. Eight or nine. nine. Yeah, you missed. Yep. 
Missed Sorry, I one. thought it was Okay. Me. Atlas. He was at 19. He was, he was within, within 24. It's within 24. Yeah. So, he is a 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. Four nines. Or should I shoot over here and help save you? No, no, no. Go that way. Okay. Four nines. At no. No. One. One. No. One. So one more damage <laughs> so. on the quick draw. And is that a crit because he's inside now? So oh, is it a crit? Yep. Yeah. So roll a... Eight. Eight. All right. So one of these gets crossed off, okay. and then it's Eight a weapon, is hit. weapon hit. So cross that off, and then all of your weapons are minus one now. After the turn, or one we go to turn. shirt. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. The Nodachi is getting distracted by guys over there and is firing at the Star Slayer. Okay. The Nodachi has a skill of three. Star Slayer has a defense of two. That's right. five. Medium range is seven. And that's four rolls. So here we go. Come on, dice. Come on, new dice. Four rolls on sevens. No. One. No. No. One dice. Or one hit on the Star Slayer. Got it. And is that everybody? Because my other guy's dead. Sounds good. That's it. Mm. Michael? All right. The Shiro. On the... Uh, actually, that's going to... Uh, no, that's not. That's I outside. These yeah. two are going to be short. Yep, and that the Shiro is not. So let us start with some short range fun right there. So Jackalope, the one in the woods right there. Okay. He is a three, four, five on the Flashman. Short range. Uh, short range. Uh, that's three with the jump. Uh, uh base. No, he's three. Another uh, two for the jump. That's five, six, seven for the flat uh, for the uh, defense modifier right there. And that's seven. it because it's yeah. short. Yeah, so sevens. Yeah. So three on sevens. Good job. We haven't been in short, but we nope have jumps. So there we go. One hit. Just one hit. Just one hit on the flashman. Yes. Okay. So okay. Now we're going to do the uh, Daikyu. On the Flashman as well. He did not jump, so he is a three. Se it's, it should be four, the same five. Then. Sevens. If he didn't jump, yeah. but his pilot is three. Yeah, so sevens. One That's hit. One. Two hits. Three hits. I've got two more. Four hits. Four hits. Four hits. Four hits. Okay. okay. Okay, so that was the Daikyu. Uh, now we're going to switch over to the Caesar from the Shiro. Uh, nice. He is a one, two for your movement modifier, three for the woods that he's going to cross, four, five. Four, five. Needing two for five, uh, two fives. No. no. There. Yes. So just one. Just one hit. Okay. Uh, going to the Grand Dragon. He is also going to shoot on the Caesar. He is a th he is a three, four, five. Uh, correction: three, four, five, six. Needing sixes, four sixes, uh, three sixes. My apologies. One hit. One. Two hits. Two hits. Okay. Okay. The Phoenix Hawk, also in medium range. It is, I think it's going to be the same thing. Three. At who? Uh, well, it's still at the Caesar. Okay. Three, four, five, six. Three sixes. 
One hit. Nope. Miss. One hit. Got it. So two hits total. Two hits. Gotcha. Okay. That leaves me with the other jackalope. Where did it go? And, oh, it's this one. Yes, indeed. And the, I think that's just, yep, the other jackalope into the uh, back of the Flashman. Uh, Flashman right there. <clears throat> we are looking at uh, other jackalope. Three, four, five. four, five, six, seven. Just need seven. But you could do it for four. Yes. Miss. First one miss. Yep. Second one hits. Nope. Third one misses. So two, so, hits. so two hits. Okay. Cool. That should be everything there then. Okay. Excellent. I'll start with the flashman. And he's going to fire uh, three into this jackalope and one into this jackalope. Okay. And that's going to be uh, my skill is three, four, five, and then six for the cover ahead of me. Can you fire it in front of you and behind you? Or is there a, a rule for splitting? Is there anything? It's all good? Okay, cool. Just making sure. Don't want to break anything. So that's... Uh, that would be a pretty boss move if he pulls this off. Sixes for the jackal. Sounds about right to me. Okay. And that's short range, so I got fours. Uh, four shots, so three shots here. Six, seven, yeah, two hits. Okay. Three hits. Nice. Sounds good. And then behind me into this guy. So that's going to be three, four, seven. Got it. Nice. This guy is going to hit uh, four into that guy. So we've got a still of one. It's medium range, so that's two. Uh, two for the jumping, so that's four. Or no, that's five. And then one for the woods is six. And then, yeah, so sixes. Gotcha. So four sixes. And that's going into the jackalope or the daiku there? The jackalope. Okay. One hit. Okay. Uh, one more hit. He is dead. Excellent. That's just what I want to hear. Cool. And then uh, this guy has got five hits on the Jade Hawk. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Phoenix Hawk, but yes. Phoenix Hawk, Phoenix Hawk. I knew it was a Hawk. So that's going to be skill one. Two for jumping is three. Four, five, uh, and then six for woods. Woods, and then seven, eight for range, and eight, eight for range. Yeah. So I've got Perfect. five shots for eights. Ooh, five shots. So one, two, just two. And then Valkyrie is going to go two shots into Grand this Grand. guy. Gotcha. Um, and that's uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for cover. So I've got two shots at nines. Missed both. Caesar I can shoot him from the Caesar, right? Yes, yes. Uh okay, I'll take four shots at short range with the Caesar on him. So that's gonna be two five just fives. 
four shots with it. How many how many hits does he have left? Uh two. Okay, so four shots on fives. Uh both? Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's dead. Gone. He is gone. Thank you. Yep, you just hold on. And then my Shadow Hawk is gonna hit this guy. That's three shots. It's gonna be at medium range, so skill three, six, seven for woods, uh nines. So three nines from the Shadow Hawk. One. Two. Yeah, one. Just one. Cool. That's all my stuff. Okay. All right, Mike. All right. Unleash. Unleash. First thing I'll do is I'll shoot the Jenner into him. Absolutely. Uh, it's at point blank range, so I got so skill, skill two. two. And he's got four. Four. So that's six. Plus one for the woods. And yep. then, so um, sevens. Sevens. And then... You extra get two, die, one extra set of die for, for being in the rear. So you get four shots at him. Four shots at him. Okay. Four on sevens, yeah. Four on sevens. One, uh, one hit out of that. And Yeah, both. So three it, total. Yep, three total. Three total? Yep. All right. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, does he have a rear firing thing? The quick draw, quick draw does, yeah, I believe. He's yep. got a rear firing thing. So you can thing. shoot, you could shoot uh, that guy at medium range for right. three, and then backwards at him for one. Yep. All right. So let's do the backwards at him for one first. Um, yeah, that makes sense because it's the easier shot or the yeah. more difficult shot actually. Yeah. So you've got skill three. Right. Uh oh, can you if there can you do a rear shot when they're base to base? No. Okay, you can't. So just fire at that guy. Okay, so got him there, medium range. Uh, he's a two. Oh, I didn't... You... Yeah, okay, yeah. No, the quick draw is a three. The quick draw is a three. Two for jumping for five. Right. Six, seven, and then medium range is a nine. So you got four chances at nines. Four chances at nines. You got this. Nope. No, no, he doesn't. Nothing there. And nothing there. Okay. So nope. Neither of those. And then he's chameleon. got to do the same thing. Yep. Uh, and that's the chameleon but he didn't jump, so it'd be seven. Yeah. So he's going to be two, oh, four, yeah. or five, six. six. So yeah, just okay, six. sixes. All right. Oh so got... no, sevens. It is sevens. Why? Two. No, it is sixes. Never sixes. mind. Yeah, yeah. And I got he's three. A two. I got three shots. Yeah. Yep. Three at sixes. One hit there, and then. Two hits. Two, two hits. Two hits. Two hits on the avalanche. Yep. Okay. And then my two guys over here. They've got clear shots on this guy. Yeah, so that's got to be who I'm going to. So first the off-sol, I guess. That's medium, too. So two, five, six, uh, seven, eight for range. So eights. So three shots at eight. One. Uh, one right there, and then the next one. Got yeah. it. So two points there. Okay. All right. And the Star Slayer. Right. Uh, two, two, five, six, seven for range. So um, yeah, sevens. Sevens. And I have at medium range, I got three shots at that. So two. Yep. Or no, one, no, no, one, one. one. Sorry, just one. But we'll pick the other one up here. No, we didn't. So, so only hit him for one. One. You could overheat him one. What's that? You could overheat him one. Does yeah? Does his pilot have OB? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. then let's OB. So what? What? Uh, how does the heat scale work here? I just know it. You can do it. How does the heat scale? Like, how do you how do you push for overheating? And what does that do for you? Okay. Okay. That's slowing me down and making it harder. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe not. Okay. We'll not do that. Is that all fire? I uh, believe so. Yeah. Let's pull dice. We have time all for right. at least one more turn. Excellent. We can go a little over if we need to because we only have uh, the next is question and answers and our goodbye from Adepticon. So. 
Yeah. And then you, initiative. I'm rolling this one, Brooke, please. I got a oh, nine. Well, yes. Okay. You got it. This was a good one to win, man. This is... All right. I, I will. They're going to go first. I'm so used to just going first no matter what happens. We were so prepared for that. Um, Why don't you move the stuff that's furthest back first? The Atlas first. I agree. Or maybe like pulling back with these guys or something. I don't know. Because as soon as I move that way, they're all fact, just going to walk move, into my uh, six unless we see them move first. So. Tatsume, if you want. Right. So I can do the first two. Yep. So what do I do? do I jump these guys over this way, I assume. Hmm. I mean, but it leaves me wide open to cover and stuff like that. I mean, this guy's obviously going to be a pain in the ass. One way or the other. He's, he's going to go gonna last. Be... There's no way to avoid that. Oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's always going to be in my six, unless I literally, well, I can't. I mean, if I jump over to the wall and put my back to the wall, that's all I can do. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. All right. Or, um, hmm. or if you pulled back to here some, or I don't know. Well, pulling back into this, that makes sense. That's easy to do. Um, but that's still good. Well, he can jump wherever the fuck he's going to jump anyway, and he is going to go last. So. Uh, uh, so we might as well do that. So the so this one is the you got sixteen to run sixteen to run or ten to jump. How far am I? Ten gets you to to hear about, and sixteen gets you into these woods. Sixteen. So there's that for that, and then this one is my chameleon. Chameleon, yeah. My chameleon, and he's 12 jump. That's pretty much going to leave him out in the middle of fucking nowhere anyway. At 12. Which direction do you want to head? Pulling back? Yeah, sure. That might not be, because that's going to be a clear shot from all of those guys. Right. So... You could position him in the woods, aimed that way. Well, I don't know. He'll just fly into his fly into his back. Uh, how about I move this first, at least? Okay. I'm counting hexes. Jeez. <laughs> so we move two. Okay. Atlas with a move of six. And the only other thing is, you know, just literally drop back to the map edge where you can't get. How many extras do we need to move at one point? Because we're we didn't lose any mechs that turn, yeah, and we, we lost, lost two. two. <clears throat> I don't know. You should ask the nice man behind you. How many me since they lost two mechs last time on this initiative? We were moving two by two, but they're down three mechs and we're down one. How many mechs should we be moving per per turn here? Okay. Okay. They're saying no swearing, please. This is a Christian game. <laughs> I don't know. I get shot in the back. I'm going to swear. I'm sorry. That's just the way it goes. I'm impressed you didn't, Brent. Now I'll move two more. Or however many of the GM set. Is this guy supposed to be on here? He's standing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, that guy should be pulled off. He hasn't moved yet. 
I was gonna say, I was like, I'm seeing the dice there, and I'm going. I didn't even see. Yeah, it no, there. I wanted yeah, to stay I didn't even there. See it. Thank you. Don't overthink it, Mike. It's a game of blowing stuff up, buddy. I'll move. Was, the only the only defense I have is to overthink things. <laughs> Um, you know, it's irrational how much I want that teacher to go down. Yeah. So I moved one. I can move another one if you want to hold off. So we've spread some damage around, but we need to drop. <sighs> yeah. The flash man. I the, would just uh, soon hold off. off. Okay. At least one more. And that off. Awesome. Yeah. Those are who we need to concentrate on. And get the Rora Kukuvi uh, behind that uh, quick draw again. What? Uh, that one that you hit in the back. Yeah. Earlier. I'd go in behind him again. Yeah. Okay, so we move two. All right. Uh, I think I got one. You want to move one and I can move one? Or that you want to move great two? with me. I'll do one. All right, and I get behind your... Uh, how far can we get there? Oh, oh, that's good. Uh, if you can get me right into the woods right there. Oh. Oh, sorry. That was not a rage issue. Where do you want to go? Uh, right, right here? Finger was, but in the woods, yeah. Oh, right here in the woods. Nice try. Right there in the woods. No, no, you want to face this way. Not quite. Thank you, Ryan. I don't Ryan, like I this. He wanted to face away. Yeah, no, he's going the other way. I thought he was putting us behind him. Uh, what was this a jump? That is a walk, actually. A walk for oh, uh, you go. yeah, three. Correction, two. TMF two. You did one. I did one. Back to you, gentlemen. Back to you okay. Guys. So which one did you move? Over here. You moved him right there. Okay. Yeah. The Dr. Mikoto. I have no idea if that's the correct way to pronounce that. That's going to be, like, where, how far that way can I move? Like, that's going to be, he's in his front arc yep. to about there. Uh, so the line for the front arc is the the line at the back of your hex all the way across, everything forward of that. Okay. Is the uh, Night Star that's a Sagittarius, is that been damaged at all? No. no. Okay. Hey, Mike, while he's doing that, try to figure out what you want to do with these guys over here. I don't know how to play this game, Brett. Well, I, I I'm don't learning know. Time. I'm learning. I'm coaching you. I'm like, learning. Got the time. No, you're trying to hurry me. I'm trying to figure out what oh, the hell is going on. You're not going to go here. So he's moving, and then we'll go again. So you have plenty of time. I'm, I was honestly trying to help. Yeah, not helpful. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't make me have to. Would you like me to move for you? I'll happily move. I know you'll system. happily move for me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Because I won command and I have one unit that has to go last. <laughs> <laughs> we got ten minutes left. Go over a little. Well, we got, we're fine going over a bit. Yeah. No, we start. We started a little late, so we can go. To, we'll finish. This will be our last turn, but we'll get everything in yeah, there. This is all or nothing. We built in a little overflow at the end of the schedule. So that was very good of you. Right. There we go. Okay. So I can move one. Yep. Yeah, I can move. I, yeah, I'm, I can move. Okay. 
Okay. All right, back to you. All right. And now we see the betrayal as Brian has stepped away from the table. <laughs> that Actually, wouldn't make any sense. Leaving Mike, Mike to defend them. Yeah, so you guys have... Let's see, one, two, three, four. Three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And we have dragon, so... We've got the dragon and... So I have now moved all of the mo the of our units on this side, aside from the one Except that's going to that last one. no yeah, matter yeah. what. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you can go ahead and move your two while Brian stepped away. It won't have any impact on the rest of this. <sighs> I gotta say, there's something about you rolling uh, Highlander dice. Uh, after pain and blood and gray watch protocol that just it's so that, that's just you you are now and forever the highlanders <laughs> so many greats have done the highlanders though it's uh, wow. i can so take the chameleon yep, correct? That's the chameleon. okay and he's a very mobile unit yeah i know i know i can see that you could totally go ruin that guy's day I could totally ruin that guy's day, or pull back here and try not to get nailed by him. True, very true. That as well, and and still keep him in the firing arc. Yeah. So I like that. I like that better. So that would be a that's a fair. very wise move. A jump, and that is uh, I'm be that ends up yeah, being a red die. A red die. Water. No. And I'm his good. TMM yeah. is. I forgot I had one. Is two plus one for the jump. Uh, I believe so. So that'd be a three. Okay. You want right. to take care of the Jenner as well? Uh, we certainly can. The Jenner. Uh, his, his, he's so fast. His defense is going to be really good. So if you wanted to have him run in and engage the Avalanche, you could. Or you could have him run across. There's no wrong answer. The Jenner is one of those reactionary units that you can get anywhere you want on the board. He's fantastic. Yeah, I'm so, sort of thinking. Brett's thinking like a wolf. Right. And he's trying to separate the... I know. <laughs> Actually, I'm not. I, I'm really trying to be nice. We're all coaching each other through this one. Yeah, but if I'm over here, yeah. that gives me more firepower to direct over here. I mean, right, it's, it's, it's a question of taking out units. Yeah. I'm not going to take. He's not going to take that unit out. Yep. He's not going to take that one out. I mean, I know this one's taking damage. I don't know what it's got left. And that Jenner doesn't hit very hard. That Jenner does not hit hard at all. True. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. No. Hard for a light match. Yeah, yeah, hard for a light match. Exactly. Scheme of what we're doing. But. So, to hold off on getting decals for the Sudeten Falcons? No, I didn't say that. It's a possibility. They're asking about uh, That'd be awesome. the Falcon logo. Yeah, so the does it... generation of logos. So if I was right. jumping, I can jump into these heavy woods, right? You absolutely yep. can. Oh, okay. So there we go. And that's a jump. So that's plus yeah, you one. Just to the... the tree out of the way. Yeah. What's the TMM on the flea? TM, it's on the Jenner. The TMM the on Jenner? the Jenner is three plus so it'd one. So it would be a four. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there we go. So. Awesome. So then, uh, do you want to save the Rakur Kubi last? Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. What do we do? Uh, Atlas is this one for the yeah, Atlas? Yeah, that's that one. Okay. Okay. okay, so the Grand Dragon has got a whopping no. 16. Go Can I get a little uh, pull to behind your Flashman, please? Uh, yep. Yeah, I will go right there, facing the back of the black man, please. Uh, one inch back, please. We were at, like zero was right here. Zero was right there. Yeah. Then let me <clears throat> rethink. We'll go. Well, if you did right that, there, the flashman from being able to shoot you, and I would allow you to shoot the uh, yeah shadowhawk. Yep, I've got some options right there. Excellent. Thank you. And then the Daikyu. Uh, you want to put his, what's his uh, loot TMM? He is a three, I believe. Yes, right, indeed. Right, back here. Right, can you put a three, three back three there? And then I've got the Daikyu. Who is 10 for my purposes. Uh, quick pause. Okay. 
You have just one left, correct? Yes. I have just one left. Okay. And we have two left. They have two left. Okay. So, so we should move our two, and then yep. you guys. Sounds good. Get... Okay. Right. Good thought. <clears throat> yeah, I realized they were they were good about reminding we're us that we lost the end zone last one. The Star Slayer's got a 10-inch jump. Star Slayer has a 10-inch jump? I would drop I, him right I there. I think that certainly works. Let's see if what that is. Yeah, you got it. All right. Pop him there. And then that's, uh, what's his TMM? TMM for the Star Slayer is two. two. So then I put this as a three because he jumped. Yep. And then the... Yeah, How much of a unit's base needs to be in the trees to count as being in the trees? Any piece. Any part of it. Any part of it. Okay. Yeah. Remember, you have a, there's a two-inch bubble around it. The Ostsol can move ten. Oh, what does that mean? Right. Well, the Ostsol could basically get there and be... Yeah, just... Yeah, yeah. That way. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so, and that's... Move... What's his TMM? Okay. TMM. That's right, and I actually want to uh, do... Okay. Oh, be, so I want to be able to use melee on that one, so I'm intending to get up close. Okay. okay. Move your last two. He goes back with the quick draw and should be at least part of his base in the trees. He doesn't that, like that quick draw. That will be a TMM of four because his TMM is four and right. trees should not be reflected on the dice, correct? Okay, make sure I'm doing it right. Okay. And then we're going to shoot, and yep. then you guys shoot. Yep. And then, yes, we will. And then we will, we will all bask in the glory and and fun stories. Okay. Let's just start, move, sweep from this direction. Let's go with the Sagittaire. Uh, I've got a medium range to here. So uh, skill one, two here. So that's three. Medium range, four, five. That's it. And that's it. So I've got fives on five shots. And I'm going to overheat two. Does it? Do you guys get the benefit of the tree in the middle? I have no idea how terrain works in the middle. There's no tree here. Or, I'm sorry. I said tree. I meant building. Clear? Good. Okay, so I've got how do how do how does the overheating work? Uh, I can overheat both and then just shoot seven shots. Yes. Okay. So I've got seven shots on uh, two, four, fives, seven fives. Do you want to bring the the dice tray? Yes, sir. So that's two, two. three, or four. Six. So Last one. Fives. So yeah. Yeah. So six. six. I'm sorry. No. Seven. Seven hits. Okay, that takes him. Takes him dead. Down. Yes. Okay. After seven hits. Yes. But uh, he can still fire. He, he will still fire. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then this guy is going to shoot at That's that. That's what Sagittarius are really good at. So partial to him. So that's the. Tianzong. So skill one, partial covers two, medium range is four, and he's a five. So it's still fives to hit, and he so he's got four fives. One. Two. Okay. Then... The Caesar is going to fire at him as well. Uh, the Caesar's got a skill two. You've got a one. It's fives to hit. Um, on four. Uh, two. Uh, three, four. Okay. And then... We're going to shoot from here to there. That is, which mech is that? That is my Shadowhawk to, uh, that's short range. Skill three, four, five, six for being in the woods. Short range, so it's just six. So I've got three shots on the six, uh, four, because I'm going to overheat one. So two. Uh, three. Three. Total. Got it. 
Uh, and then he's going to shoot. Uh, the Valkyrie is going to shoot in the rear. No, the Valkyrie is going to shoot. That guy's going to be at medium range too, right? Yep, correct. Definitely. So, three, four, five for jumping, six, seven, eight at medium range. So he's going to fire twice at him. Sounds good. Nine for. Nine for intervening wood. So nines, two nines for him to hit there. Um, no, I will shoot here short range uh, because because it's in the rear arc. I get an extra shot anyway, right? Okay. He's actually in the. He's not in the rear. This guy's not in his rear. No, just flying across the base. More than half of his base has to be across the line. Uh, okay, so he's not. Okay. Well, then, yeah, I'll just shoot at him. So that was nines? Yep. Uh, wow, nice rolls. Nice. Um, that's it for my firing. Sounds good. I've got he, these two shot, he shot, these two shot. Oh, my flashman. My flashman's going to shoot... And this guy him? That guy's dead. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. He just gets to fire. Uh, so my flashman is going to push 10, 15 minutes. the Shiro. No. We'll yeah, start three, you up. four, uh, five, six for range. So I get seven hits at sixes. Wow. One. Two. Oh, that was two separate. Or yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, Three, four. four, and I got one more shot left. Five. Okay. Possible critical. Oh. Six. Weapon hit. That's it for me, Mike. Cool. Okay. All right. Bring the pain, Mike. <laughs> Um. Yes. Yeah. What can he shoot? Him? Yeah. I believe he can shoot here. He should be able to get, get there. This measure. I think it's actually medium range. It should be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's definitely less than forty inches. Twenty-three. They're twenty-three. Medium range. Medium range. Yeah. Okay. So medium. It would uh, just be one free. Two. Correct. Four for the jumping. Right. Five for the tree. Right. Six, seven, seven for him. Eight, eight nine. nine. So, so nine, nine at medium. <laughs> nine. And at that's medium. the chameleon. Yep. So you got overheating. You've got four shots. So four nines. Does he have a overheat? Oh yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Just okay. one. So four nines. Yep. Four nines. Uh, oh, there's a, crit. a twelve. Yep. Yeah, and, that's, and, that's, and, okay, so, so that's there's, a possible crit. There's two hits. Possible crit. Uh, I got Crit's ten. Got a ten for the crit. Ten for the crit is fire control. All right. So you've got two more shots to take. Right. Oh, uh, you hit for two, right? Yep. Yeah. And that's it. Just that's two it. and yep. then the crit. Okay, you got a second crit. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, roll. roll for a second <clears throat> crit because you're in a structure. Five. five. The five is no critical hit. Okay. Okay. Good job. All right. Uh, so that's him. Um. He can shoot at him. Can he? He can't shoot at him. Nobody. Uh, he can shoot at him, right? The Star Slayer can shoot at him. Yeah. yeah. How much damage has he taken? I'm just out of curiosity. He's got like one or uh, two. One. He got hit pretty good. He's got one pip of armor left, and then some internal. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Shoot him. Yep. Definitely shooting him. Yep. <laughs> so where's your Star Slayer sheet? A uh, Star Slayer is shooting him right there. No, where's the? Oh, the sheet. sheet. Sorry. So that's skill two. Two right. for jumping is four. Eight, nine for cover. Uh, ten, eleven. He's being eleven. Okay. Yeah, so you might want to shoot wanna, him anyway. Yeah. And what is... That's uh, four, seven. Yeah, it's just seven. Just sevens at range. that point. Sevens overheat for two, so that it's adds five. Me... Fives at sevens. Five. Five shots five at seven? Five shots at sevens. Yeah. All right. Uh... Technically, that one. Yep. So one. 
Uh, one, two. two. So two total. Well, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then last one. Uh, seven. Nope. Did not make two possible crits. <clears throat> two possible crits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I rolled an eight. Eight will be weapons hit. Okay. So you said the overheat is just one, not two? Each attack is independent. So you definitely can't get more than one crit out of one attack. Okay. Make sense? So he's oh. each attack is four dice. But you only get does that, you only get does that include if you roll a 12? That's a different one? Okay. So, well, so this guy here? Uh, Presumably, yeah, that guy yep. there. Okay. So he is... That's the, the uh, Ostal. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Ostal. And that's going to be medium, so he's got a skill 2. Right. 5, medium, 7. Uh, So 7's for... Sevens for three, three yeah, sevens. Three, three sevens. shots of seven. Yeah, three shots of seven. Uh, nope. nope. Yikes. Yeah, Got that one. one so in. one. Okay, that's going to take him out. Okay. All right. So he's down. And then... Um, You've got the quick draw. Quick draw. Can he hit him? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably, oh, yep. But he does have a... Um, he had taken a weapon hit, so it's minus one damage. What's his his heat? None. So yeah, so he's he gets three. So you've got skill three, four, five for the woods, and, and then medium range, so seven. So you've got three hits at seven. Three, three chance of seven. Okay. So his damage usually is four. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, two. Yep. There's two there, and, and the then... last one. No. Yes. So just yes. two. Two. Two on that bad boy. Sounds good. <clears throat> Two on the Shiro. Huh? Oh, that takes him out, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. And then your generator gets to shoot. Fired. No, it Jenner hasn't, so you fired. can hit him. Right. So let's shoot at him. He is... What's his uh, pilot uh, skill? Sorry, Jenner. No, you're okay. Um... Pilot skill two. Two right. for jumping is four. Five, six for him seven for the woods. woods so an eight nine so nines nines and the jenner will have three shots yep three shots three at nine. nines nope uh nope nope last one nope nope okay okay nothing i think that's all of our stuff cool. yep. all right do you want to go first i certainly can you're my guest oh we killed sure. we killed three of yours that turn yes yeah okay 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 so we're going to go with the Phoenix Hawk for, uh, actually, let's just go in the theory that we're looking at here. Um, yep, we're going to do the Phoenix Hawk first right there. Into the uh, Into Caesar's the back, back of the Caesar, absolutely. That's nice. So we're looking at um, three, four, four. And it's at the rear, so four shots at four. Okay. One hit. Two hits, three hits, four hits. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't have any overheats. That, that is the that is the flaw in that theory right there. Uh, okay. We are going to dragon next. Maybe I'm going to send the Shiro at him. Shiro right okay. there. Um, is who are we shooting at? Caesar's uh, still Caesar's alive, still, right? Yes. From here. Uh, no, from, oh, from here. here. Yep. Okay. So we're doing uh, one, two, four. three, four. Yep. Two at four. One hits. Two hits. Okay. Roll a uh, crit. Seven MP hit. Okay. Okay. I have no jackalopes. The Grand Dragon. That's this guy. Yep. I think I'm going to have to send him to finish off that uh, Caesar. Caesar. Okay. Uh, so he is a three, four, four five. five, six, seven. Okay. Three at seven. Working on it. Nope. No. 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 There yes. Has. One okay. hits. He's dead. Yay. 
He has. Uh, as as the command, as the command was given, right, it I'll was good. Uh, you said you can also move the I can, dragon. I can take him off. Yep. Yep. And that leaves me with the DiQ, and he is going to shoot at the Flashman. Okay. So uh, three, four, five, six. six for the woods that he's in, and then eight for seven range. Uh, is he within six inches or not? No. no. Okay, then. Uh, so eight reset. Six ends right there. Sounds good. So eights, and I've got five chances for eights. No. 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 There's yes. Okay. No. 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 One hit. Okay. That is it for me. And All he, right. And he goes Done away. On you. Yes. All He's right. Got... I'm going did to this guy. Did uh, this guy fire? Crazy. Yes. Okay, so he's off the board as well. Yeah. Well, well, ten minutes, five minutes. So here we go. That is uh, Kurakubi to the back of the quick draw. All right. Got you. One attack. I do that, sir. Sure, Four damage. Shush. Oh. Whiffed. No, he no, uh, he missed. He missed with his one attack. Right, and yeah. I believe we take him off the board too, right? No, he's fine. He's oh, fine. he was fine. Okay. Okay, right. he's overheating to fire there. Okay. Uh, we have uh, skill is a three, four for the tree. Right. Seven for that. Yep. Range makes it nine, and at range it's three overheat. Two more, so five shots. Five nines. And Did I do that right? Is that one the chameleon? This is the chameleon. Okay. Did I do it right? Yeah. Okay. Five shots at nine, sure. All right. Five shots at nine. Here we go. No. 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 One. All right. And two. All right. Okay, he is firing at Flashman. The no, Flash the, the Flashman. Behind the Flashman is the Osts, whatever. Yep. Gotcha. The Osts all, yeah. Okay, so uh, he has a one, two, three. You're in trees. Four range makes it six. Three sixes. All right. No. One. Two. All right, roll for crit. Seven. Seven is on the crit table. Uh, seven is MP hit. Yeah. Okay, MP we'll is that right there? Yep. yep. Okay. This guy, the Nodachi, he is also firing at the Ost. All right. Uh, he is a three. Ice. Sorry, I can't see it all of a sudden. Two. Three, four, five, six for trees, seven, eight for range. Gotcha. Okay, four shots. All right. Nope. nope. One. Nope. Nope. One shot. Roll All right. for a crit, though. Roll for crits. Seven. And movement again. Movement, again. movement, okay. Half your half. Okay, and the Atlas. Atlas is firing at the same target. All right. Atlas is three, four, five, six for the trees, seven, eight for range. Nope. <laughs> nope. One. Nope. Assault oh, done. Oh, the assault oh, is so done. Dead. Okay. It's done. All right, everyone. I think that gives us a pretty decisive victory for the Iridani Light Horse. It does. Uh, that made for a wonderful four-day campaign. Thank you all for staying with us. I'd like to thank the panel for their play. Great job, guys. See right there. Mike Iridani Steinhill Light Horse. and Brian Young. Yeah, just me. Just, just, just me. Just Brian Ron. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again. Once again, my name is Michael Cervella. I'm here with Brent Evans, Michael Stackpole, and Brian Young. We are going live from the final day of Adepticon. Give us just a couple of minutes, and we will be here to uh, say goodbye and give you a few more questions. Thank you so much, and have a lovely day. Back on. There we go. Have fun.
Welcome back, Battletech gamers of all ages. Welcome back to the last 40-ish minutes of the show. Uh, this is going to be a generic Q&A here with Lauren and Randall and myself here as we kind of just talk about things that we've seen here at the show, questions that you might have, and, you know, anything else under the sun as long as Lauren doesn't put his foot in his mouth again, as he did yesterday. <laughs> so right now no one wants that Irby. winding on the show we have been super excited to be here and doing this once again and it has been amazing as always being out here and enjoying the show in the presence of literally nothing but minis gamers for five days or yeah five days because we technically do a day zero there for those of you who don't know as we're setting up we are technically we are also selling things as we are setting up. It's always a most amusing factor of this show, but also one that is pleasurable because we literally get to see almost everyone who walks into the show as they line up in front of the doors to grab their badges. So meeting them, hearing stories all day long as we're setting up is an amazing experience. And it's just been great being here. And we and we were already signed up again for next year. So for those of you who are very curious about Adepticon who want to see us, we will be here yeah, in person again hit. next year as well. So yeah, we might just, you know, sensor hit. Yeah, I've been to uh, conventions all over the world. This is absolutely my favorite convention to attend. Uh, the the people that run it, Shelly and Greg, are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, Dustin, the the uh, Hank and Matthias, like there's a whole crew of them. I just know Shelly and Greg particularly. Um, but the energy here is fantastic. Uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance. Or want to try to save up across the year to make it, I would highly recommend trying to get here. It's just a fantastic show. Especially yeah. especially if you're a minis lover. It's just it's, yeah. just, it's low key and fun and we're not sprinting yeah. for seven days like like a Gen Con. We're, yeah, we Gen have, Con. I love Gen Con, but that is a beast. We, we still get to sit down and relax and yeah. talk to people. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh this has become one of our favorite our favorite. Yeah, I, I'm literally watching the pods. Getting strapped down and ready for a dropship liftoff is where kind of hit that moment where you're both happy that it's done because, you know, we're tired, but a little sad because, you know, it's over. So, yeah, a lot of good energy. And then, uh, speaking of shows, and I know that Adepticon is winding now, what is the next show that people who might be out there be seeing Catalyst Game Labs at right now? Is that Gamescom Canada? UK Games Expo. Uh, no, UK Games Expo is the next show that we will have a booth at. So my UK uh, which Games is out right there at the end of, of June. Yeah. Which we've, Catalyst has never been to. Uh, been to Officially. The, uh, the UK, well, at, with a booth. Yeah, with a booth. Uh, I was there last year kind of doing a recon in force, a little reconnoitering sort of thing. Um, I, exactly to decide if we should be there. And we absolutely decided. So we're coming in big. Uh, our demo agents have been going crazy, uh, putting together some awesome plans for dioramas, for games. Uh, it is going to be a fantastic time. I can't wait to uh, be over there in May with all those amazing people. When for, and then obviously Gamescom Canada is slightly after that. So for our Canadian friends who are out there, even Americans who can drive across the border and come see us, we'll be at Gamescom Canada and shortly well, there. Yeah, which is uh, a small booth at Origins. Which which is mid -June, Origins. There'll be a yeah. spot at Origins. Uh, June June. After that will be Gen Con. Uh, again, these are places where there will actually be a booth where we're selling stuff. Chupacabra Con? Are we doing a booth there? Uh, we're doing a booth at Chupacabra Con. Um, and then we'll, Con, we'll, we'll, we have a our first ever, triple. which is Triple Con Weekend, no, which I'm is Bryn and come, Bryn, Christian, and a small crew will be at uh, the Nova Open. And then I and uh, Lauren, well, maybe Lauren, maybe Talon, but re the whole rest of my family <laughs> uh, will be running PAX Prime, PAX West. Uh, and then John and Ray and a few others will be down at Dragon Con. So that's going to be kind of crazy. Yeah, that's going to be a big weekend. We will not be, by the way, we will not be streaming at all three of them. No, no, no. We will no. be picking one to stream. Absolutely. And then... Uh, See, after that will be Essen, and then we are hoping to be able to get to PAX Australia with a booth. Hopefully, we'll know that soon. Still waiting on an answer. And then PAX Unplugged should be the last show that we actually have a booth at of the year. So come visit us. If you happen to be in the neighborhood or if you know you're going to be flying to one of those, always drop by the booth and say hi, oh, even if you're not grabbing anything. We always no. enjoy hearing and listening to stories that you guys bring along. And that's actually what Adepticon has really, has really been about. It's been... So many people have walked up and 
just said, hey, here's where, here's how I started in BattleTech. And, and Randall's doing a, unif a reunification tour with those local stores. We have a question about when he'll be at Noble Knight Games tomorrow. Uh, 3 p.m. I saw that. I was just looking that up. That's so 3 it's starting time. at 3 p.m. at Noble Knight Games. It's yeah, then, then on Tuesday at 6 p.m. at Slice and Dice Games. Then on Wednesday, it's 4.30 p.m. at the Arcade. Then on Thursday, it is Hoplite Games at 5 p.m. On Friday, it'll be 5 p.m. at Odyssey Games. And then on Saturday, it's straight up 10 a.m. first thing in the morning at Games Plus. All right. Sweet. Uh, quick question about the Infiltrator Mark II and Cavalier. Cavalier. The battle armor. Slater for plastic? I think so, yeah. Uh, what's the question? Oh, just if we're going to have them? Yeah. Uh, possibly that was actually on the list, and we ultimately trimmed back because we want to, like, initially we had two battle armor packs a year, and we trimmed back to just the one with two in it to see how it does. Uh, if they are incredibly well received, then we might rotate back to the two. And I would love to see both of those uh, in plastic myself. In fact, Randall is crazy enough that he is driving to all those places, actually. <laughs> yes, I am driving to all those places. <laughs> so uh, another question I saw was the timetable for Leviathan's Kickstarter fulfillment. Randall, you're going to have the really best question on that. Uh, still kind of so here at the, right moment. Now, the molds are being made. I think the goal is by late summer um, to start delivering that Kickstarter. Um, again, that's the goal. That is not a confirmation. Uh, and then that means it would be available in the fall. And apparently you were thanked for catching uh, Night Moss's question. Yeah, right. people people are thinking Rem's wearing around here, look, keeping us in line. Rem is on the highway right now in between shows, which means she can't say anything. That's true. Yeah, yeah, I bet, she, I bet true. she has the live stream pulled up on, on the phone. Listeners going, no, and just I, can just see, no, no, I could see her pulling off on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> to quickly <laughs> tell us. <laughs> uh, what do you have against Florida? Uh, oh, just on the schedule. Again, we have only posted the store schedules through the end of next, uh, through the end of this week. I have many more stores that I'm looking at, but it's I'm balancing yeah. what our distributors think would be a best store with what our demo agents would be the best well, store. You're in the Midwest right now. So. Yeah, so... Uh, I wouldn't say no to possibly getting down to Florida. Is like Ray, isn't Ray doing some stores this next week? I was just saying that was going to be in the next quarter. Not this week. Next week. But okay. in the next, no, just in the in the coming months, okay. we're going to get Ray and Aaron out a little bit on the road as well. They don't like to travel, but we're kicking them out of their rooms um, so that everyone can have this experience, or at least as many as we can. Let's hear about conventions, in which case uh, uh, Florida's got a couple of conventions. We just haven't. We just haven't been invited, and we haven't, you know, it hasn't been a big push for that. We haven't really scouted but, anything out yeah. out there. Yeah. There's a really good one down in Or I believe it's down in Orlando is a big one too. We just haven't, we just haven't made a point of that yet. Uh, when can we get a visit to LA? Well, actually, so we had been talking about potentially doing Comic Con with a booth that's probably off the table. San Diego is pretty. Uh, close. It's really close, uh, but. I still may go down there just to be on a panel or two and visit with fans. So we will know that in the next month. And obviously, as soon as I know it, we'll be blasting it out to everybody. Which year will Den of Wolves be released? That's just kind of mean. <laughs> but That's truthful. Just, I know. Uh, 2024. Um, the Mike and I are both within three chapters of finishing our respective sections. We had a, a talk here. Um, I was actually on on track to to wrap it up when when I got derailed uh, back in February, but uh, I plan on uh, doing my next chapter this week, which will put me basically in my end game for the for the novel. So I think 2024 is uh, is definitely happening. In fact, I really hope I really want to see it out by summer. That so, would be fantastic. Yeah, that'd be really awesome. Actually, I, I, I've had a good time. I mean, I've, and then people can finally stop bothering you about it. Oh, then they'll bother about shadows of faith. It doesn't matter. I, no matter what, I'm 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 under the gun. So it's all uh, good no. though. It looks like Lorca Nagel answered the questions about the beginner box in the game of armored combat. The beginner box. The only difference for the 40th anniversary is a new cover. For the game of armored combat, the difference is a new cover, and then there is a little packet of ill clan material. Uh, which is a rules sheet 
for the weapon systems in that area, mech variants for the eight mechs in the Ilkland area, and then a four page little primer on the Ilkland era. Perfect. Will we get a party back version of the Hunchback? Of yeah, I was reading that earlier. I was trying to figure out what they were party talking back. about. Version. I have no idea what he's asking. I'm wondering if he's talking about the Swayback, which is usually what you call the uh, eight medium laser version. And absolutely, I want to see that come out. So while we were waiting for some more questions coming, because I don't know how far back the delayed stream is, Randall, what did you? What is you know we talk, we talk about how we love the energy and we love being here at Adepticon. What is your favorite thing about? being here at Depticon. If you had to actually like to find a couple of moments of this is what makes Adepticon feel refreshing and relaxing for you. Um I think one of my favorite parts is the the visuals. Like I'm an equal opportunity gamer. I play every type of game. I love board games. I love role playing games. And and there have been some really beautiful board game components, but it's still all you almost always flat right? It's cards. Whereas when it springs to life in 3D, and so you're walking through a room and almost every table is filled with gorgeously painted miniatures with amazing terrain that not only does it look great, but you can also see the passion of all the people that got together to make all this material work and then to get it here. And you're just going after table after table after table of this just visual feast in front of your eyes. Uh, this year I was able to actually get, uh, Adepticon has gotten so big that they have a whole other hotel where the uh, historical games are at. And uh, so to be able to get over to the historical games, many of which the, that I've played, Black Powder, uh, love that game. And again, just table after table after table, these amazing dioramas, amazing paintings. Uh, so I think that's just one of my favorite parts is that just visual feast for the eyes that then ties into the passion that everybody has. What about you, Lauren? Just the uh, friends, energy. I mean, just there's, there's a lot of our, uh, some of our best friends in the, in the industry are here also um, running booths. And we have time to actually visit, grab lunch together, talk. That's, a, make, that's a rare occurrence. Make, yeah, it is really the show. And also make plans, though. We, we've, we've come up with a couple, three different projects here at the show for product and swag and, and game ideas for the future. We actually have time to be creative here as well. So just a great show to hang out at and uh, be part of. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm on Lauren's side of it as well. You know, I do play plenty of games. Um, I tend not to play as many games while I'm at the show, though occasionally I'll always jump into a grinder when I feel like throwing bounties on people's heads just for fun. But again, I'm on the same way. It's about the energy and the people and, and seeing, and seeing, it's basically our first show of the year. It's the first time we get to see a bunch of our people after, you know, a five-ish, six-ish month, you know, layover from yeah, conventions over the holidays. <laughs> yeah, maybe four. But still, you're right. The first show of the year, it starts on a really good, really good foot with uh, starting here. No, and that, that actually applies to almost any convention. I love the conventions because I do get to see wonderful friends, whether it's uh, other industry folk or it's our demo agents, or just players that you have seen every yeah. year for two decades. Uh, it's really special. Two decades? Really? So they did mention Three that decades. it was the Laser Boat Hunchback. Yeah. Um, hunchback with the AC-20 is always a sway back according to Tex. Hunchback's orth orthodoxy. Love it. Yeah, orthodoxy. T uh uh future, be future beginning box idea. Morgan kills Archer versus... Your yeah. Naga Karita's Warhammer. Well, that would require us to have you open the box, and then there's only the Warhammer because he can't see the Archer. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you, just leave it. you actually have the mold outside in the plastic, That's but it's really... just not there. That'd be great. Actually, yeah, well, I really want to. Is his uh, Mor Morgan's on? We'll just, do we just do, we just do, the, we just do the shoot it in clear plastic? <laughs> we'll just go not go. Yeah. That'd be terrible to paint, probably. Yeah. Hi, Talon. It's good to see you back as well. We'd like to see more of the update videos you did some time ago. What are you working on mostly now? I actually would love to do more of those update videos. I actually kind of missed the fact that I did not uh, do those for the Mercenaries Kickstarter. Those were a lot of fun coming in every week and giving you guys the uh, the clear updates via video for those who really enjoyed them. 
I look forward to doing more stuff with our YouTube channel as we've continued growing that. I mean, Ram has already started the Newsday Tuesday, but I'd like to see us get a couple more uh, videos in every week or every other week as well of other content. Maybe I may be the one that do those occasionally. Who knows? Well, Talents we'll Battletech see. Corner. Have fun. Yeah, Talents Battletech <laughs> Corner. Uh, TB, TBC. <laughs> Uh, but right now what I'm working on is actually getting a lot of stuff that you guys have really enjoy. Things like more shirts, more merchandise, uh, getting the uh, things that people have been talking about for a while, like the dice pucks and the pins and all the inner sphere stuff that's kind of been out of print for a little bit because of the Kickstarter. Um, getting those back in on our store and at conventions and stuff like that. And then creating new ideas for new merchandise. Like we want to do some new, people have been talking to us a lot about doing flags uh, for like the, uh, what Harebrain Schemes did several years ago. Um, I actually really enjoyed those and I want to bring our version of those to the tables, for example. So I'm still in the, I'm still been mostly in the background generating new merch ideas and following up on manufacturers to get those cool ideas out there. Yeah, Magda, it, it is sometimes weird having Talon call me by my name and people say that, but go to a convention and an try answering to dad sometime. You just, you get numb to it because everyone around there is being dad. Like, either 100 people turn around or nobody does because we're all, we're all immune. Yeah, Brent, uh, Brent does the same thing. Usually when it comes to the show, he switches over to Randall because yeah. you just can't yeah, no, nothing you feels, be able to communicate. Yeah, nothing feels more worried of yelling dad across the show floor and you have like three other people look at you, but your own father isn't like turning around to look at you. You think yeah. that after, you know, 30 years, he'd recognize his nope. sense of voice. Uh, so. Let's see, a friend who's planning to be at UK Games Expo has a couple of Battletech-related game pitch ideas. Who should he contact to set up a meeting? That would be me. So that's just Randall at CatalystGameLabs.com. But give me a few weeks, please, before you send that send that email he, to me. He might be gone for a little while. Maybe gone still. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to, uh, love to love clear, clear plastic. plastic. Uh, we've absolutely looked, uh, looked into that. We haven't made a final decision, but... I wouldn't yes, be surprised can, in the next few shoot clear plastic. Oh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't be surprised in the next few years if you see that. Especially for like like a stealth mech. I mean, yeah. this is fun. Yep. So will there be more inner sphere at war hex maps soon? Um probably not. Uh I mean you never say never. Uh that hex pack or that counters pack d did well. I don't know if it did well enough to warrant doing new ones, but so I wouldn't expect it. Are there any plans for naval minis and new rules to make it fun to play, or is that too far out? Would love to have a Raven Naval Star. We very Aerotech three box yeah. set. Yeah. We very much quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, we very much want to see rules for aerospace uh, to support a line of aerospace miniatures. The current rules just don't do that. And so it's really about we need to get a new rule set that is well liked, well enjoyed. Um, and so that's we're working on that behind the scenes. Um, but you know, that's gonna be a little bit down the line. It, still. it does and doesn't use like real world math to like make the yeah. rules out of. <laughs> uh, I asked we have to shamelessly bribe for a new animated series campaign. That would be uh, tops. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we Not have us. no control over that. We would no. love to have control over that. No, no kidding. kidding. But that is completely outside yeah. of our purview. Uh, asked John Helfers yesterday. Oh, that was that's what you just read. Uh, you've done encounter games for Battletech and Shadowrun. How about four Leviathans? Well, I would let's I would get say Leviathans game for Leviathans first, please. Well, not only that, but let's get the Battletech encounters out there. <laughs> Give it six to 12 months to see how it does. Personally, I think it's the best version yet. James did a fantastic job. Yes, he did. If it does really well, then who knows? Uh, are there any plans to put out a BB 3.0? Yes, we are absolutely discussing that. We do not have a definitive time frame for it, but we are absolutely discussing if we can improve on that again. Now, there's always a lot of things that we tend to talk about in the background, you know, at shows, at meetings, passing ideas. And, you know, it's, it's about keeping the, the, little, the little earworms occasionally just as it comes alive. Because sometimes, you know, we'll have ideas that don't see fruition for two or three years. Yep. Uh, very easily. So. While they're catching up again. Um, so something I kind of had asked Lauren yesterday, Randall, since I got you here at the moment. What was something that you saw that you contributed to that you think was a leading cause to the rise of Battletech? 
Hmm. The, re the re rise. Yeah, the yeah, re rise. The Renaissance. Yes, as many people like to call it. Um. Well, I think the uh, there's many factors at play there. Uh, I think the uh, the fuel that burns at the heart of all of it, though, is the plastic miniatures. And it was the redesign work. And so it was me working with Ray and Anthony and Brent to redesign them. And I remember... <laughs> in one Skype call, two or three screens, and I have every iteration that has ever been put to ink for what the Marauder looks like. And yes, every Marauder ever, ever. And we're all on a phone call for hours, nitpicking every tiny little detail. And so, and then that, and then working with our fantastic uh, team at Leah, on the manufacturing and then working with Dak on the packaging. And so I think of all of it, that was the most satisfying part is then to be able to just, you know, cascade all the minis down over us and like roll yeah. around in them. It, it's it, just, it wasn't just making a mech in plastic because most people forget we did that before. Yeah. Yes. We, we did. We just said, okay, let's just take what we got and put it in plastic. And it just did not work. Yeah, it was a huge fail. No, and so we had to redesign. It was about this, yeah. And the redesign was an incredibly painful process. Yeah. So many thousands of hours because you're you're trying to hold on to everything that we love about those old designs, but update them to modern, excellent um, aesthetics, and then molding them in the right way and crafting yeah. them in the right way and the right type of plastic. And it was it was a pretty arduous task, but. But it that's is just what it paid off magnificently. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what is going on with Aces? Uh, it's moving forward. With I would the... say we actually have minted a deal, and we are now moving forward strongly. I think within two months or so, we will be at a place where we can really unfold our full plans for Aces. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we had a crossover campaign of Shadowrun and Baltech as a fan gift. Could there be a new, yeah, Battle Run. Could there be a new one combining Leviathans with Shadowrun and Battletech too? Sure. Levdotech. The Le Levdotech. <laughs> Levtech. Uh, will the BT app get any work on, or is it dead? The the BT app had just got a a series of upgrades and releases just like a month ago i, I had a, so few, absolutely. Uh, uh, people a few things there to, they say that, the, that their their app is really buggy so we have to figure out what well, we can like. and, follow up with jay yeah, but okay. they are, the they're updating it's... they're releasing they're yeah. putting out more content yeah so, i also yeah. think that part of the thing is that people are looking to get it on more than just the ios tablet and they're looking to see if we can get a, a android workover which we had talked about at one point but we had focused all of our efforts on the iphone first because we knew that well, that was no, where a majority of users not were. on phones at all I, not the iphones the, no that's what i'm saying they, to see it on iphones and then android it's in, not on a phone at all it's on a tablet i'm aware okay you keep saying phone though i'm saying they would like to see it oh, got on it. a phone i I don't, I, I could be, I, I usually don't like speaking for people, but having tried it in some play testing, I don't think you really understand what it would be like to use your phone to try to track the damage and all of that. Uh, I think yeah. that would be incredibly difficult to pull off. But something, but again, we never say no, we will look into it. Um, hold on, before you scroll down the screen, we've seen the command game demoed. Uh, but is there going to be any love for Battle Force or strategic Battle Force for fans of Battletech wanting a bit more grand strategy and complexity? Um, Random question. I, I wouldn't say much. Um, what we did in splitting Battle Force off into its own book and then coming out with the counters pack um, really was kind of a good hurrah for that. I do have some evil plans for a battle force thing down the line, um, but it's got to it's got to fall in the right spot with everything else going on. So I wouldn't say that it's completely gone, uh, but it is going to be a little bit before that might come out. Uh, digital versions of maps for smart tables. We've actually looked at a couple of smart tables over the years. You know, Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong, unless we looked at one recently enough, but none of them have really 
stood out as like being a big hitter for us to kind of jump in on right now. Stream tables are fun. Yeah. Uh, but they're also not on a common system generally, which means, you know, we have to make one for that smart table, then that one over there, yeah. then this one over here. It's just not conducive to getting work done. Um, yep. Eventually, if they if they became more of a thing, uh, and had a standardized integration maybe, where we can yeah, do it once and it works for several. I'm far aware of there's no standardized anything right now, so it's just not a good place for us to spend a lot of time. Hmm. Um, Have you ever considered making a vault of plastic minis and swimming in them, a la Scrooge and McDuck? Uh, actually, yes. I just talked about that just a lot, like a night or two ago. Absolutely. Uh, thoughts on creating new Succession Wars box set in the future? As a matter of fact, uh, I don't Mark, know. Did you type that question when I wasn't looking? I did not. There are two things going on. One, we are uh, making a recreation of that original box set, basically making as close as we can with uh, current productions to get that replica out. Uh, that should be heading to print this uh, late spring, summer, and it'll be available in the fall. And then my son, Brent, and I have been developing a spiritual successor to the Succession Wars, a big boxed 4X style Resurgent Empires game uh, that I hope by the spring to have built completely out into TTS. And at that time, we're going to blast out to anyone that wants to come and play test it. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. Um, There was a question that passed by earlier, but uh need to say the redesign with the Marauder. You did an amazing job. I always uh, lived it. I have has loved it, and the current version is the best version yet. Thank you so much for it. Nice. Cool. Thank and you. And then, uh, so I did a quick question of, uh, about the app itself. Of what about Alpha Strike support on the BT app? Uh, we have been looking at that, absolutely. Yeah, it'd be really nice to get some stuff on there. Yep. Um, apologies for that, but how is Europe distribution slash better availability coming along? Um, Randall, it's kind of like a me, you thing. No, but no, it's no, all, uh, oh, is it now in his case now? <clears throat> for the first Perfect plan. It, it's 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 thirty five percent of a plan. Um, basically, everything's held up right now behind VAT. If we can get VAT, when we get VAT done, because it will get done, or we will all just jump off a cliff. Uh, when VAT is done, uh, we will be uh, uh, getting forward, moving forward on the the big European distribution hub that we're we've been working on. But until we fix VAT, nothing else can happen. And the European VAT, we're, we're working with a company called Simply VAT. And there is nothing simple about it. It is just crazy, it's, complex, it's insane. Yeah, brutal, utterly insane. But we we see a light at the end of the tunnel. Right now, what they've said is we've turned over everything that they they require. Now we're waiting on them to see is it now done or is there more paperwork we don't know about. Yeah, is it truly done? But yeah, I am not going to rest until I get a European hub. That is something I've wanted for three years or more. It's going to happen. And yeah. yes, I, I I have the dancing Irby here. Thank you very much. Uh, Randall, the question I had missed earlier because it passed up too quick from Tweezer was uh, specifically for you. Uh, Randall, the other day on stream, you were called out wanting to do a new Blood Kite Mini. What can we do to bribe you into pulling that up on the to-do list? Uh, almost always the, the mechs that are chosen are chosen with like five or six different criteria points. And so the blood kite, I personally would really like to see it. But at the same time, I know that it, it hasn't checked enough boxes off yet. And so it keeps getting pushed downstream. But uh, I don't doubt at all that in a few years, we absolutely will have it. Uh, the, digital tables, etc. any chance of a Time Award Destiny rule set for Roll20, Foundry, um, Fantasy Grounds, or other virtual tabletops? Absolutely. We are looking at that for everything. Is anyone else watching Lord make the Urban McDance? I don't know if you're yeah, the, really... I have violence. Thank you. Thank uh, you. was asking about a uh, future facing Leviathans. Um, uh, as Lauren said earlier, let's get the game out first. Uh, and then if it continues to do really well, then I think absolutely uh, you might see other games that we do with the system and going into a cool space game. I would love that. It would too. Uh, it was sad that Ulysses lost the license, and no German Battletech material is more here. I hope there will be a new uh, there will be new ones in the future. Need to buy over a hundred novels for my kind. We would love to find a German partner who really wants to work on Battletech. Uh, part of the part of scaling it back was to retrench, come back at it again to find that 
partner. Yeah. So we've got some ideas uh, people are talking to, but nothing we can announce yet. And Aerotech, when? See what I did? It's never say never. You guys aren't going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. It may take three to five years, but we'll get there. So 3026? Yeah. 3028. <laughs> All right. You heard it. 3028. I'll hold him to that. That's a long time from now. And in 3027, he's going to regret saying that. <laughs> As we're all alive in 3027. Right. Well, heads in jars. No, that's true. You're still trying to type away, that's you right. know, from from the little robotic hands that are just typing away at the computer still all these times later. Uh, having grown up in the middle of nowhere in Europe, it's great to see the recent pushes in transparency, communications from you, and making the hobby accessible. Big things continue to take my European money. Awesome. Thank you. We again, the European market. I'll is... keep you to that. <laughs> well, there's a reason that we're going over to UK Games Expo and we're going in big, is we know that both the UK and then also the the Essen show that we're doing, there's lots and lots of fans in the UK and Ireland in the EU, and we absolutely want to be there. We want to grow with that. Yeah. We want you guys to be there with us. We know your the European. Our European network is like the second biggest network following the U.S. And we and you know we 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 have plans for Europe, U.K., Canada, Australia. We just got to keep it going. Yeah, so, so one, bit by bit, you know, there's actually yeah. several make, several uh, different things are happening in the background that actually continue to push that forward. It just happens very slowly sometimes. I saw uh, for Battletech themed PJs. Can we do that? Uh, sure. sure. Why not? I, I still want Battletech ties. So like you wear ties. Yes, every Sunday. And I think there's lots of people that are doctors and lawyers and actually, you know, go work real jobs that would, I think we would sell the tar out of ties. Because that's and the last thing I've been, thing making, I, that, I've been thing. making that argument for a year. That's the last thing I want to see when I'm being put under for a surgery or something. Is my doctor wearing like a, a I Steiner tie? Be like, he's got me. <laughs> He's got me good. As fans of Leviathans, what can we do to push the game more to the general gaming community? Um, well, just run demos of it. the The game runs itself, uh, and it's just so intuitive. And so, just try to get into your local game stores, and you know, similar to how the BattleTech grinder might be the most powerful mechanism yeah. for expanding cool. BattleTech. Uh, Leviathans is the same thing. Just put it on the, sh you know, get it on tables, get playing the games, and the people will come. Precarious says, at least I have the Art of War this year. We just need to read Jamie Wolf View. I am so very happy about that book. I saw my it first copy of it. Amazing. And it looks so awesome. It's exactly what I envisioned. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited too to see how well that does out there. Uh, I think hey, people are going to love it. Yeah. Hey, is CGL going to do anything with the Black Pants Legion? Tex is undeniably a big community figure and part of the BT Renaissance. Uh, Maybe we do some things with them already. We are. We do some things with them, and we will continue to do things with them. Absolutely. We, we think he's awesome. We love Tex. Yeah. Big gushing over. Cannot wait to meet Randall uh, plus Chums at UK Games Expo. Can't wait to be there. He teased with the potential of the fortieth patch. Oh no, no! I will be coming with a giant. Uh, bag I, gave, I gave out nearly four hundred patches with handshakes here at this show. Alone. You want to show the patch? Yeah, you want to show the patch uh, at all? Oh yeah! I think when I head to like Gen Con, I may have to add another zero over there. I may have to add another zero to how many of these things I ordered. It was before, so cool before to before see you that Okay, think that many people. So I will be walking around with, uh, I literally had it in my pocket, a, a slot of them the whole time. So Who is that? Mechanical Frog. That's a good good Firefly reference. Thank you. That's fun. Man walks on the street wearing that tie. You know he fears nothing. <laughs> nice. Helen <laughs> right. ties for lawyers. Nice like I have a good for everybody. Yeah. We are awaiting you in Spain. Yep. We'll be there for uh, the third week in May, I believe. For Spain? Yeah. For what show? Uh, the BattleTech European Nationals oh, is, in, no. is in Spain, and then from there I go to the the next weekend is the uh, English BattleTech Nationals. The week after that is UK Games Expo, and then the week after that I'm over in Ireland for an Ireland BattleTech 
nationals. So awesome. it'll be over there for like four weeks and then hitting stores all along the way. So we have a couple more minutes here before they're going to boot us off the air here. So let's take a couple Wait, more questions. One. Who's going to stop us? I mean, they can just hit the off button. And then we're just talking, yeah, we, you, know, uh, you know, actually have real other work to do, not just to sit okay. here and blab. Now, don't get me wrong. I love blabbing with you guys. But, you know, well, Randall, there, the, 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 the things are starting to literally be torn down around us. Is there a plan uh, for products If we are, if Catalyst is, a, is allowed to have a booth at... Australia, Pax, Pax Australia. Pax Australia, nothing will keep me from being down there to meet you guys. I'll eventually get him to go diving, one, too. One of the things that I loved looking at the last Kickstarter is we were kind of stunned at the percentage of how many Battletech fans there are down under. That was so cool. I absolutely want to come down there. Uh, one that was missed because it is a part of the... Uh... The UK Games Expo. Is there any plan for products on sale at UK Games Expo? Swag slash new BFMs, Irby Lens, etc. Uh, almost everything that we had did not make it. <laughs> uh, so it'll be another month or two before all that stuff becomes available into the retail channels. Including the UK Games Expo? Uh, yeah, all of it should be there. Uh, let's see. Lorcan Nagel, Augustine was chatting with Gary Jackson and John Summers yesterday and today. They're looking forward to the Nationals. I am so looking forward to those weeks with you guys. You're Next amazing. Next con you're streaming from. Oh. Uh, I think that might, might be, be all Con. the way to Gen Con. It might be all the way to Gen Con. Yeah. Con Canada? Oh, no. GamesCon Canada might do it. Uh, we didn't do it last year. Maybe we can do it this year. Maybe. We'll look at it. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe on the GamesCon Canada just, for sure on Gen Con. It's a whole other setup. It's a whole other level of infrastructure. We only get to do it three or four times a year, not at every show. Yeah. Expe uh, definitively at Gen Con. Maybe Gamescom Canada. Well, it could be um, a little rougher with us traveling. But that is yep. all the time I have, guys. We are at 3 o'clock. Yeah, we are at final, 3 o'clock. Final thoughts. Final, final thoughts. Final thoughts. I am still in awe of what we as a community and as passionate people of Battletech have built. Um, this renaissance that we have done, I've had, I don't know how many industry people come up to us also in awe of what we have done with Battletech. Um, and I can't thank all of you enough for being there and standing shoulder to shoulder with us as we have lifted up this universe and game that we just love so much. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing like what we've seen in the last three years, especially, and knowing that we've got so much more room to grow and, and expand Battletech, uh, is just really exciting. Uh, all of our properties, but you know, Battletech's having such a renaissance. It's hard. No, there's nothing we can't do. In fact, you know, we're gonna do like a dancing, or like we get Tiffany Elmo and reach get it like. Yeah. You know, so, you know, the dancing area yeah. coming soon. Tell it. I think that as the kind of the newest generation of people working within Catalyst, being able to see and experience people starting their first stories into BattleTech yeah. and Shadowrun and stuff like that, I think that has Love been that. one of the coolest things where, you know, Randall and Lauren talk about all their stories from, you know, 20 plus years ago about when they first started or the, the people that they gamed with. And I'm seeing that moment for me right now. And I think that those, those little stories that I'll get to tell about BattleTech and Shadowrun in this 20 years from now is something that experiencing now is super awesome. So, oh, so that guy came up to me yesterday and say, yeah, I got into this, like, watched the Battletech cartoon when I was, like, six. I'm like, yeah, Thanks. we're old. <laughs> so, last bit, yes, every single con I go to, either before or after, I will be hitting a few stores. Come look on the line for it. Come shake my hand. Let me thank you. Let me give you a patch. You guys are amazing. This we is awesome. You all. So, I'm going to let this uh, get us out of here because I need people packing boxes here soon. And Michael's hovering over us like he's going to beat us with a bowling yep. pin. And so, thank you now. so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to the videos. It does a lot for us to get it out to all those who might have, have been here this weekend. And it increases our presence on YouTube. And we'd like to continue doing more of these. So, could like, subscribe. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. It definitely makes our weekend, our day. And literally, this is. Doing this is so much fun. On yeah. top of everything else we do here, this has been a wonderful addition. Yeah, Brendan, thank you, and for thank you for all the fans who have reached out to us with your support. Our whole yeah. family appreciates it. Yes, we do. Yep. Thank you. Hey guys, Bye. we'll see you next time.